to another episode of Thursday Night Live. I'm Dana Lottery with Fly Fishing Bow Over Outfitters. And tonight, I think I'm by myself, folks, because I've been sitting here for an hour before the show, waiting to go live, obviously, because that's what you do an hour before the show. You sit here and wait. You wait and you contemplate. What am I contemplating? Well, I'm contemplating the fact that Tim hasn't shown up, okay? So apparently it's a sick joke that he had, just like the other week, where he decided to run the whole show. And now, more than ever, I need Tim. And I'm a little nervous because I can't figure out where he's at, so I've texted him, I've called him, and I'm trying to patch him into the show because I don't know if he's running behind. I don't know where he is, but uh, let me see if I can figure out where Tim is. Okay, well, he's answering his phone right now. And, um, okay, so he's, Tim. What? It's 7.09. I'm literally sitting here waiting for you. You know, you know I don't like to tie flies, and I think this is a sick joke. What, what, the, app, what the heck is going on? I, I told you I couldn't move my hair appointment, my nail appointment. I had things to do today. 7 o'clock, I'll be there in a few, but... I told you, I couldn't miss his appointment. Sorry. Say that again for the folks in, in the back. Well, the people, they, they told me that my nails didn't look good, that my hair wasn't good, so I'm I'm getting my nails done. Are you serious? You actually yeah. finally found money to get your nails done? And you decided to do it at 7.09 on a Thursday night? Well, I, I started at 7. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so what do you want me to tell the fine folks here? We'll just entertain them. I'll only be like maybe like entertain 10 them. They, they're not yeah. here for me. They're here for the flies. Okay, you got one job. You're not funny. You're you yeah. don't like telling jokes. You're um you can't catch fish. I was with you yesterday, and so what's oh, your purpose? Yeah, if well, you didn't either. <laughs> well, I tried hard. So <laughs> let let me you let's try. let you me try. see where where you're at. Like this is unbelievable. Like I just seen a comb go through your hair. Well, just, you're glitchy, you're, so you're probably not you really gonna, close to me. You got your nails getting done. Yeah. Let me I see your nails. I asked for a neutral color, I, and this is what I got. 
Well, yellow. That's for the X Caddis and the WD40. Well, that's I guess I, so. I I guess the folks will somewhat be happy with you because hey, they've been asking for you to get your nails done. But if I can encourage you to just speed that up, I'm gonna throw this over to commercial and hopefully you've got one minute to get that done and to get over here. So, uh, look at right, split there, buddy. I'll yeah. Okay. Sounds good, bud. Okay, bud. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Aw, oh, great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your fly Kia table will turn any space into a well-organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. I can't, you can't make that up, folks. You guys, you What's guys up? set them up for it because although you didn't raise a GoFundMe account, was our music? Didn't do it. Didn't come up with the cash. Cue the beats. Cue the beats, folks. <laughs> and so because Tim couldn't raise the funds properly, he had to uh, get my 12-year-old to do them. And you missed the beginning of the show. Probably because Ben Armstrong was eating at the Canadian Brew House tonight and he couldn't make the show on time, so we thought, hey, let's delay a bit just because also Jim James William Crawford is 42nd. We're, you know what? We shouldn't talk about him and his celebrations anymore because it crashed the show last time. So we're going to sing an happy birthday. We're going to quite simply leave Jim James William Crawford and his 42nd wedding anniversary out of the party so folks welcome to actually welcome to thursday night live fly tying i'm dana lottery fly fishing bover outfitter so we got a pretty cool show tonight because that's what i say every time <laughs> so one way or the other it's if cool. i i already cool. spilt the beer so that's uh i got that out of the way yeah, that's a good point. It was not my my fault. So, uh, yeah, well, welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Welcome here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm trying to bite my tongue about politics in Alberta right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have a tough time, folks. Uh, yeah, a few comments. But this is not a real hat. That's a sticker I put on my hat. Just is it? Yeah, it's rather large. That's Barry, folks, and uh, you know that because 130 of you guys ordered the sun shirt, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so tell us where you're from, uh, what you're drinking, and maybe tell us or don't tell us what your favorite river is to fish. You can make up a name if you want. We'll make up a name: the Blow River. <laughs> I was gonna say Frenchman's Creek, but that works too. But what we do want to know is not only where you're from, but most importantly, what are you drinking tonight? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm drinking this new one that Dana found at yeah, a brewery here. This is uh, Cake Face. Cake Face. From Cold Garden. Cold Garden. It is good, folks. It's, it actually tastes like a hint of my cake in the apple. Like cake. I don't know how they do that, but cheers. It's called vanilla. And I'm drinking to start. I've already started. <laughs> Uh, people skills for the third beer of the day. <laughs> but uh, it's been a long week. It has been a long and grateful week with work at our fingertips. And uh, yes, we had an impromptu day yesterday to go and chase a bull trout. Yeah. And uh, we ended up just chasing now uh, wieners and marshmallows because <laughs> crossing dogs. And yes. Yes. Birds. So. Uh, yeah, let us know where you're from, folks. I uh, got some text messages about the microphone on the earlier segment. <laughs> that was pre-recorded, so yeah. blame that on the pre-record. Uh, things went a little weird there, but... Uh, 
sound is off, huh? Whoa, Damon's lottery sound is off, boys. <laughs> Talk to us. Uh, maybe Cam was on to something here. <laughs> Take two. If you can't hear us, let us know. Yeah, so, um, I don't, I don't know why it's, oh, I know why. There, folks, is that better? I didn't have it on the right microphone. It was on this microphone, oh, which is why the pre-recording it. sounded <laughs> so bad. Well, well welcome to okay. this in my life. So... <laughs> If, uh, if it is not a hiccup, we're not doing something Yes, right. if we can do this all over again. Man, and Cam said it's still off, but I know that I've fixed it because I could see here, folks, I... <laughs> oh, good gracious. Well, to that, we take a chug. So yeah, yeah. do chug for us, and I'll chug Cheers. for you. Oh, yeah. okay, well... Ooh, if you know me, I don't chug beer well. No, you don't. I do a lot of things well. <laughs> <laughs> so critical today. All right, so Take what are we? What are we tying? Uh, both your mics sound off tonight. We did that just to make sure you guys yeah. were fixed. perfect. See, fixed, just like. <sighs> <laughs> yes. Try not to get into politics tonight. <laughs> Take uh, out your anger on someone else, like yeah. someone who rhymes That's with, a good story. With, with Grimshaw. Grimshaw. <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, Mike Hawkins, Longview, Texas. So if you guys haven't listened to the latest episode of Fly Fishing Saves Lives, <laughs> uh, Mike was the story. And that one, folks, Yeah, it's good. Uh, bring your tissues because that, that was powerful, Mike. Thanks for sharing that. Mm. Oh, we got the microphones fixed. I oh, can't believe okay. that. I, we sounded really good to ourselves. In our own and, ears. Well, folks, that's perfect. sometimes... The dilemma in the world. People <laughs> yeah. just hear themselves talk and they think they sound amazing. amazing. It isn't Bash Tim tonight. It's <laughs> just uh, it's just what it is. Mike's just said the same thing. I'm only here to see how you torture Tim tonight. Yeah. <laughs> see, folks, if I stopped, you guys would get... You uh, would, you would stop showing up. So lots of really good things planned tonight. Um, we did talk two weeks ago about setting up a nymph rig. Mm. Okay, so... Because the fishing sucked yesterday, we <laughs> thought, uh, hey, let's put together a video on a nymph rig, which we'll call the pogo rig, um, and you will catch more fish on this rig. But I have to warn you, because we're going to show you at the halftime show uh, the video that we made. It's about 11 or 12 minutes, but you guys asked for it, so we put it together, and we will definitely play that for you guys. Yeah. Uh, but what you have to remember when you go through this nymphing rig is duck <laughs> yeah. d-u-c-k is duck all right well, every time that, grim chop bangs <laughs> get short the ld is coming i don't know what that means ryan oh the ld is coming uh, the ld oh man the ld is coming okay good job to your audio crew well that's my left hand <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it manages all this oh, folks man. we are on our own see before it used to be just tim up here tying yeah and I got to be behind the scenes trouble fixing. But that's a, that's an and, interesting uh, thing to say. Though. I encourage you to go back and watch some early episodes, like point. early, early episodes. Yeah. We we actually frequently do it because you almost forget where you start and, and where you yeah. are. Not that it was bad back then, just how different and oh, the growth was. that's happened. It was bad. It was just you. <laughs> it was just me. <laughs> but honestly, like biggest game changer in this show um, was having a co-host. Because like you said, when it started, I was just kind of up here doing my own thing and I was full, carrying on conversation by myself which is there's none of this there's no yeah I mean he was cat calling from the background but no one could hear what he was saying yeah so. and that disappointed me yeah <laughs> and yeah. so we thought maybe one day maybe we could go back to that I will have a microphone maybe we'll <laughs> throw some clips of past episodes so yeah, not a bad idea. hey well we're here so you guys are here too and we have not shouted you out so yeah let's uh, see uh, here. Mike Robertson wants you to drink <laughs> and uh, Bailu is what's up. He can't be here long, he said, because uh, he What's said he's got things to do, apparently. Well, no one likes a quitter. Nope. Uh, Doug McLean, Calgary here, drinking Blind Man Brewing, Florida. Weiss. Weissy? Weissy. Mm. Wessy. 
YC. Why do you come? Ryan Stubbs, the Miramichi River in Doketown. I've been to Doketown, and I've oh. fished on the Miramichi. Lucky guy. That is fantastic. I'll tell you what. When we were in New Brunswick, um, the best food I ever had. Fiddleheads and salmon. How about that? It's a fiddlehead. Ryan, oh, Ryan Stubbs. My, this guy asking what a fiddlehead is? I have no idea what a fiddlehead is. Yep. That's boy is about to learn. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Storch is here. Sean Ellison. Sean, jerky. Let's chat. Come on, brother. Yeah, this is a Cody Frank's in the house. Jerky. Uh, Sin with the Grin, who sent us the amazing Tim oh, and Dave. Oh, yes. Plus. That and is I, awesome. And I tried to... Yeah, the show will probably crash. So um, <laughs> that was fantastic. That the was flies awesome. that he tied. Although I don't know why I look like I have a like this is brown. Okay, <laughs> this is brown, Tim. Right, <laughs> Tim. What? I'm asking a question. Yes. This is yes. brown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who else is here? Tammy's here. Ryan, Terry Sather's here. Michelle Terry Reed. Sathers, what's up? Cam Woolnuff is always here. That mm -hmm. is a fan. And Cam, did you get your top fan badge or what? I don't know. We have more up the game. Cameras. We we sometimes cameras, yeah. open up the open up. We <laughs> hey Tim. There's something hey, wrong with your mic again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Is that what you heard earlier? That's a, I don't know. Tonight we're tying the X Caddis <laughs> and the WD40. Yes. This is a fly tying show, folks. <laughs> Believe it or not, Tim. Do you mind sign languaging for me? Okay, so t tonight on the show, there's Jacques Heru. Atlantic Salmon, BL from the Mac. Storch is still up north. Mm. Okay, what did Chaz? I encouraged him to chug a beer. Well, folks, Tim doesn't have a ride tonight. So Not tonight, folks. One we, and done. We, we. <laughs> uh, Two and done, maybe. By Lou. He's a quitter. Uh, building other people's dreams. Yes, you are, my brother. <laughs> House. Nice. Uh, okay. Permission Fiddleheads is not a weed. Where are we at? York is Yorkie's back. He's back from Ooh. his California vacation. Oh. And it is good to see you back. Yeah, what's up, brother? See, look. See, I have fiddleheads in my fridge right now. So what is a fiddlehead? Yeah. It's well, Cam did say it right. It is kind of a weed. It grows on the side of the rivers, but it's like it, it, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this thing. <laughs> It's nice supplies, folks. Oh, this man. thing is going to hail in a handbasket, so uh, oh, I don't even know where my my uh, <laughs> mouse cursor is. Hey, Tom, Pap, Papy, Tom, how do we say your last name? Uh, welcome here from Baltimore, Maryland, USA, drinking rum. That is awesome. Wicked. Um, <laughs> Ben's in the house. He made it. Made it back from the burros. It's a fern. Fiddlehead oh, a fern. is a fern. It is so good, man. But, like, how do you eat it? Like you, They just cook it like broccoli. Ish. Oh, okay. Maybe I insulted the fiddlehead. fiddlehead. Uh, please bear with me as I insult the fiddleheads. Ferns, but, uh, sprouts, interesting. Oh, Those they're ferns. so good. They're so good. Well, we, Salmon. And Jacques's we'll go out gotta, there. Jacques's, Jacques's got to hook us up. We got to go out so there. So Jacques, like, talk about food, okay? Um, Larry's Gulch. Right. Oh, wow. Like, What's well, the dream? Okay, so dream. talking about food, folks, I bet you guys are dying to see. How's the bacon cam look, Tim? You well, it's, it's on, but okay. I, I don't know. It seems to be lacking well, some luster. Well, folks, this tonight <laughs> is for the sake of my belly. Because <laughs> <laughs> just like we talked about the great food that's yeah. happened, Let's it's almost clear. it is guide season. Tim doesn't and have a belly. Now this, folks, is the baking camp tonight. Because sad. we hope that you guys really sad. take a uh, page out of this notebook and say, hey, tonight. Yeah. There it is. A glass of water. That is water. simply a glass of water, <laughs> folks. Not even half full. Because I was full. getting chastised by people saying that I was, conv I was uh, not convincing, but I was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Encouraging them to eat bad. And then uh, the real Jen Lyle was really mad. And so I said, hey, tonight, folks, we're just going to simply go with a, a tass dough. <laughs> A glass of water. Glass un tasse d'eau. En français, on dit un tasse d'eau. Mm. In English, we say a glass of water. Ah, H2O. So pretty much that's the baking cam. I know you guys are disappointed, but hey, the diet is real because <laughs> it is guide season. So <laughs> Troy Tracy, yeah, he hey, knows Troy. from out east. Pape, Tom Pape like tape. What a what a great explanation. That is perfect. Pape. Okay, Jacques, we are coming to yeah, Larry's Gulch. Oh my to. word. Never caught a salmon out there. Never. No, never, never caught one myself. But uh 
The people, the people, the people, by far the best. The food and the fishing, the experience, and. Uh, but you've said that. I've heard him say that about yeah. 10 times. The people. The people. The people are unreal. Yeah. As soon as somebody says they're from out east, it's like. Yeah. Solid. You might not be able to understand them, but they're yeah. the best people in the world. Yeah, look, see, everyone's so a fake baking <laughs> cow. Well, Cody, let's just uh, say I hinshawed you. <laughs> Eat the cake. <laughs> How does that feel to be great? Not even shot? cookies, folks. Look at that. Jen's not mad. Just just tired yeah, of my tits, tits jiggling. jiggling. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, you're you so your, dirty. Yeah, your coconuts. Okay, Tim. Well, let's get everybody f- uh, fired up with some thread here. Yes, and, my friends. Uh, let's talk flies. Let so. them know what you're needing them to do, and then yeah. uh, we'll <clears> move from there. Okay, guys. So... Tonight we're doing a couple of, not tiny flies, but the one is a smaller fly. We're tying it in about a size 16, uh, 18. You could tie it all the way down to a 24. Uh, that's called the WD-40. And if you've never heard of this fly, um, get excited because it's probably one of the most simple emerger slash nymph style. Um, well, I, I think the best place to fish it is as a dropper. Um, but we're gonna tie it in a blue wing olive pattern tonight. But it's you can definitely vary it across other mayfly patterns. But We'll show you that version of that one tonight. And then we're gonna move into the X caddis. And X caddis is a classic fly. Um, you should always have a dozen or two in your box and a couple sizes just to, just to have. Great on any type of like full blown caddis hatch. Uh, what I'm gonna use for thread for both flies tonight is I'm gonna use some UTC. Um, this is gonna be a 70 denier in olive, okay? So we definitely need the olive color for the WD-40. And I'm just not going to change it because it's irrelevant when it comes to that uh, that caddis fly. It'll be a tan caddis, but we're uh, we're going to be working with this thread anyway. So a 70 denier of some kind for the caddis, and we definitely want some olive thread for um, that WD-40 as we're going to tie it in a blue wing olive color tonight. If you ha- if you do tie it in black, that's fine too. Black and, and olive still going to run as a betis color, and really it could even look like um, when it comes down to it, it could be. Um, what am I blanking on here? I don't know. I'm it's not listening smaller, to you. What's smaller than a blue wing? <laughs> um, a, uh, blue, a bluer wing? A midge. A midge. That's what I was trying to say. It could definitely go into the midge category. Um, Adrian's here. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Let's get some uh, olive thread spooled up. And if you look, if you need to grab some materials for this first fly, I'm going to keep it real simple for you. Um, the materials on this, on this first fly are just going to be a caddis emerger style hook. We're going to be using that olive colored thread a very small amount of green um, or darker olive uh, dubbing, and then one mallard flank feather. That's it, okay? Mallard so or wood duck. simple. Yeah, really simple pattern. So that's what we got looking forward to you to come up first on our flies tonight. All right, Patty says, come to Cape Breton, fish the mar- marguerite, and I will guide you. Hopefully there's margaritas too. Yeah, is this in Mexico? <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> Sounds good, Patty. Well, we appreciate now, the invite. Now man. all I want to do Hope we can take some people up on that. Let's head out to the East Coast. You know, I've never been farther east than Red Manitoba. Deer. Manitoba once. Cause we I've always never to... been to Manitoba, but oh. I've been out. I've, I've spent uh, quite a few, a lot of time in Quebec City. Right, yeah. Uh, which I, I don't talk about anymore. I wouldn't mind going to Quebec City. It's, it's I don't beautiful. speak French, but I yeah, you, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, like if you Montreal don't speak too. French. Montreal too. Larry's Gulch.ca, folks. Absolutely the finest lodge in New Brunswick. And uh, that was the first place that we went when we filmed Ties Flies, which, hey, why don't we show that next week, Jacques, on here? Yeah. You tell me. Because um, Jacques is in that film, so we should show that next. Yeah, I forgot could. I had that. Yeah, let's do it. Also, uh, maybe Nine Foot Rod will be shown on the final episode. That would be so awesome if we can do that. Okay, okay. Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. are just antsy to get tying the flies. <laughs> so we also got bingo, and yes, bingo the tonight. bingo so is your same, bingo cards same get cards? right there. Same cards? That same says cards. dot shop. Why is that? That's a wrong. That's, That's wrong. the wrong one. That's wrong. So guys, bingo if you've cards. Never, uh, played our bingo with us, we're going to get you to, to get a here. card. And once you have your cards, it's going to be... Uh, Pretty slick. So just like standard bingo, we'll tell you what pattern we need to see in your card. Um, then you have the chance to win some pretty awesome stuff. We got giveaways every night on the show um, by our sponsors. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, I think, is the ones who we're going to be giving away for tonight. Yeah, so some shore big, fishing. Big thanks to them. And some shore fishing. And so. also, actually, what I do want to show you before we get time, 
So that's where you can get your. <laughs> where you can get your that, video card. I got that dialed in. You did. It's not bad. We did have preview mode, but I dare not do that. <laughs> <laughs> do not get crazy. Yeah. Boom. Boom. See you later, folks. Okay. So what I'm going to do uh, is show you guys one cool thing. And I forgot to ask the authorities about something, but we're going to work on this because hold tight. So I'm going to go to the Dana cam. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Call it the beer Hand cam. Hand me this awesome thing because we showed you guys this last week, but what we didn't show you. Same bingo cards as last week. Yes. Okay. This, this was the resin river inlay and it's now mounted with a Norvice. Wouldn't you like to win this entire setup on the final episode of Thursday night live folks? That's part of the lucky fly box donation. I can't guarantee the Norvice yet, but I will confirm. Look at that. Look at this. Pretty awesome. Yeah. What you can't at, quite see just because it's a, there's you know, flies there's in actually there. flies inlaid in there, guys. Like, yeah, that's if I that's wasn't as deadly a, as they come. If I wasn't tying on a fly key, it, trust me, that'd be the table I would be stealing. Yeah, this is a showpiece. It's yeah. not focusing, but hey, I'm also a showpiece. There it piece. is. That looks good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> folks, that's so deadly. So for sure, this table's going, and we're just working with our sponsors and us and we're probably going to get the Norvice attached to it and give it away give it away what give it epic, away together so epic giveaway for the end yeah so that's Corey Mahan uh he built the table for us and we're mm -hmm. going to talk with our sponsors uh just like my face thanks Colin <laughs> but oh, I, I know a way that we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> really try to make that Norvice happen um, we'll figure it out. Plus, we've got a two or three fly rods that we're giving. We got a lot of stuff for that. We've got not to mention uh, how many dozen 35, flies. <laughs> 40 dozen flies that we're giving away. We're going to have them all in fly boxes and stuff like that. So what we're giving away tonight at Bingo is hold tight. You guys are going to tie a fly, and then I'll show you that. But uh, some pretty cool stuff from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Yeah. So, Tim. All right, folks. Folks, <laughs> get ready are to tie ready to some this? flies. Let's do it. Okay, so what you see there in the vise, guys, that is what we're calling a WD-40. Now, there's actually two versions of this fly you could tie. You could tie it as the WD-40, or you could tie it as the WD-40+, plus, which plus, is the- Plus, do yeah. tell, Tim. Ooh, the plus. So in the plus, all we would be doing is we're adding actually a piece of CDC that's gonna come directly out of the top of the thorax. Oh man, look at that. Um, oh, and yeah. what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna make it an emerger. So we would be fishing it right in the surface film. Um, and that's kind of the difference. But tonight we're gonna to tie the nymph version of it. It's unweighted, it's designed to be unweighted, meant to be fish as a dropper. Jacques, it's you are allowed before. to win that, yes. <clears throat> yeah, we gotta get Jacques onto the old Norvice train. Switcheroo, switch, yeah. Switch you out of that regal that would, mindset. That would be like beating Wayne Gretzky in a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> yeah, would skills be competition at uh, an all-star game. Oh yes. Okay guys, so actually something quickly before we get going we didn't really talk about is what is Thursday Night Live? Okay, so we're gonna do a quick explanation um, and, and kind of show you the packages that we put out this year, uh, which is the first year that we've done it, which was pretty exciting for us, and we got big plans coming up for next year as well. Um, so Thursday Night Live, what is it? Well, in the original stages, like we said, if you were to go back and watch it, it looked a little different. We were in the brewery back then. Um, we, we designed this to bring a community of our local um, tying friends together and just bridge us across the winter when it was, it was hard to, you know, um, stay sane, we'll say, especially in a year like this. I want this. to add like, something to that, Tim. Yeah. Gene, Gene finally commented. Gene? Okay. Actually. So, <laughs> Shallow Water Drift Co., Gene Aquilini, he, he guides on the Bow River. Check him out, guys. Check his Instagram, check his website. So, we ran into Gene last week on the river, and we had a very cool conversation. Gene, Gene's always been one of the awesome dudes out there, just sporting mm. positive attitudes. And uh, we had no idea that, that Gene watched the show. And we're like, well, you've got to comment more because <laughs> you're kind <laughs> of a up, window buddy? shopper. So Two comments in one night. This two, is crazy. Two <laughs> comments. Shut the show down. <laughs> this might go south. Yeah. But um, the, the point of that is like Tim was talking about is the community. And mm. the community is far and wide. And it's also really close to the people that are around us. So Gene uh, and Quinn with Drift Out West, who also tunes in once in a while, uh, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate the support, and the support is coming right back at you. So, well, yeah. Tim, 
finish that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a great a great stop there. It was great to see you this week, Gene, and uh, we do appreciate you. We love having those relationships with other guides on the river because that's what it's about. If we can't even have those relationships with you, why would we, you know, why would we not want that? It, it makes sense. So thank you, thank you for tuning in, and thank you for letting us know that you're in here tonight. That's awesome. So just to kind of expand on that a bit. As I said, it was a just trying to get the local community together. It obviously expanded a lot in the last year and a half, being that we've been in this COVID, we'll call it state of mind. Um, we were forced to come into the to the studio, and like we said, it created the show, which is is awesome. I have a co-host now. We get to have a lot of banter. Um, our setup has come a long ways. We're able to interact with you guys on a, on a much greater level. And this year, we put out uh, 80 seasons of materials so that you could tie along with us so that you would be using the exact same materials that I'm gonna be using tonight and now how what did that look like well if for instance this one here if we can get it to focus there we go season three episode 16. episode yellow fingers crazy 16 so we got 20 episodes in this season okay so in each episode um, on the back side here you can see you've got um, there's actually two bags in there and so in each bag is a different pattern We've already tied each pattern for you once, and we've given you enough material to roughly tie it two more times. Um, and so really you're getting about six flies a night, and that's kind of what we're, we're hoping to move forward and continue doing, is getting these kits out and hopefully getting a lot more kits out to a lot more people next year, because our community that started small has grown amazingly. It's all of you guys that are in here, um, and we wanna provide that for you. So when you see me tying tonight, I will be tying out of the materials that we've um, we provided here, but I will also tell you the materials we're using and we want this to be an open discussion about these flies too We're not here to hide information about them We, we want to share with you how we would fish them where we would fish them um, Why we would fish them and kind of some different techniques So yeah, as we go through them We'll kind of back out after I tie the fly and me and Dana will we'll just kind of discuss that with you Like where we would be fishing this pattern. Um, yeah, how so uh, uh, Alternatives to CDC. I would say no uh, that's a tough that one. That is yeah, guys. a material that is absolutely fantastic. But only don't, but only don't worry, grown. We're not using it tonight, guys. So I don't go run off and look for it. Yeah. I think he was concerned he wouldn't have it for tonight's flies. Okay, but yeah. Won't need so it. Uh, <laughs> only grown in the butt of the duck. So. <laughs> and funny enough, from duck hunting this year, I actually stripped a whole bunch of natural CDC. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Like when you actually dive into the materials and see where they come from. Yeah. yeah they literally come right from the duck's anus. They do come from the coup de canard. It's coup French. De canard. Look at my French tonight. It is You're hot. Crushing it. It is hot. So what I need to do is because Corey just showed up. So if you could hand me the table again, he wants to see how sexy it looks. Sexy. So Corey, this is with the Norvice attached. It's, it's going to be really tough to focus. Maybe I can put my hand here and try to say, hey, I'm on the same plane as the Norvice. <laughs> right, yeah, folks? You kind of see that? That's, that's one of the giveaways for the F Lucky Fly Box at the end of the year. Um, that is absolute. That's sexy. Yeah. And so is the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Man. I don't know if your ego can fit in the room. All right. All right. That's all right. him. Let's, uh, let's tie this fly. I don't folks. have to take the camera off me if that's the way <laughs> you want to play. Uh, uh, and in case you guys missed the baking cam, it's diet week. So yeah. it goes a little something like this, <laughs> friends. That is H2O. The old that H2O. will not get the salivary glands moist. <laughs> oh, moist. All right. What Tim. a terrible word. Okay, we got off that. You. Okay. You, Let's oh, tie this, this, this is worse. This is, <laughs> this is this way is worse. Absolutely horrible. I literally have. Get, get me the nail cleaner. Nope. I need it. I can't you, look at this. You just keep tying. It just looks so bad. Now you I just have tying. bad cuticles and bad nails. <laughs> Anyways, okay, guys. So, what I've got in here is I have a size 16 Caddis Emerger style hook. Um, this is what we're going to be tying this pattern on tonight. So, like I said, the materials you're going to need. Um, the original pattern and why we believe it's called WD-40 is because um, the original pattern uses wood duck, a wood duck feather. So that's, I don't know if that's the why or not, but that's why I thought it's called Also, WD Mr. Riley's in the house. Oh, what's up, Mr. Riley? <clears throat> so what I prefer though, over using an actual wood duck feather because wood duck is very expensive and it's also, when you find a good wood duck feather, you would rather be using it for the wings in, uh, in your mayflies than a dry fly. So I don't waste them on this. What I'm gonna use here tonight, <clears throat> I got this guy here. So this is, I like mallard flank dyed in wood duck color. Okay, that's kind of my preference. 
It doesn't really matter. You can use a little bit lighter colored one if you want, but I'm going to, um, for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna be using this one tonight. So in your kits, you just have this. You have just some stripped um, mallard flank. Now, how we got that for you is we took it out of a feather like this. Mr. Riley wants to know about your yellow fingernails. Well, well that's because the folks screamed yeah. at him. They didn't like my nails, James. Yeah, so we had to get them and, done. And uh, so I figured, hey, and then I asked uh, Matea for a natural, more neutral tone color, and I got bright yellow. So Steve Johnson says, I guess that's that. the beautiful people, the beautiful people. Ah. I can actually, I got the electric guitar. I could. Oh. Yes, I would love to hear you. Ah, yes. Ah. What are you saying? <laughs> okay, Tim, so it's this you is got the feather. show. It's potty <laughs> it's break. Our feather. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm just gonna take uh, a clump of feathers off of here, about that size. I'm just gonna peel them off. That's where what we provided for you and your kit. That's where I got it from. I like just how um, all that kind of variegated appearance from uh, from that mallard flank and how it comes off there. That's probably a little bit much for this size of fly. So I'm gonna take it down a little bit more. Because we do want, uh, we're gonna be leave, using this for the tail as well as the um, the thorax. Okay, so that's that's a little better. It's a little better amount. So we just want to keep the tips fairly aligned if we can, and if they aren't aligned, we should try to readjust them a bit. Um, that looks good. So now that I've got that ready, I'm gonna set that aside for a moment. I'm gonna get my thread started on the hook. So I'm gonna go ahead, start my thread <clears throat> behind the eye, and I'm gonna work it back just a little bit. With that smaller thread, that trick you just saw, um, I'll do it again for you real quick. When you have thread that's let's say 70 near or we'll say six aught and smaller, you don't even have to cut your thread on your tag. You can actually just come in and when you get um, when you get your thread secure, come back over top of it. All I've done is grabbed it, and head it in the other direction and it'll break off even, okay? Now I'm gonna bring that up to about there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab that mallard flank or that wood duck if that's what you're using. And we want to get it and try to gauge a bit of a tail. Well, this is the hardest part, honestly, the hardest part of this fly is figuring out how long you want this tail. And that's just because it doesn't matter if it's a little bit too long, but just the way the curve of this hook is, it's hard to tell how much tail is gonna be hanging out um, the back end. But I like to think that I would like that tail to be about half the overall length of the, of the hook shank itself. So I'm gonna kind of gauge that by tipping it down and assuming where it might kind of end up. And then at that point, I'm gonna switch hands <laughs> People are they say, could you imagine being new to the show? <laughs> oh man, there's a lot going yeah. on. And look how badly done that uh, is. Oh yeah, it's, I touch it's, my is it yellow window. out instead of white out? Yeah. For geez. post it notes. <laughs> so, as you can see here, guys, once I got that tied on there, I can tell that I, I kind of tip it down. I'm like, Ugh, it's still going to be too far. So, I can come in here. I might back off just a couple wraps. And then I can just, now that I have it secured on there, I can pull it back a little bit. That might be a little bit too much. Pull it back just a bit, tip it down. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna really make sure it's secure. And now I wanna make sure that I keep that tail feather or those fibers of the tail right up on top of the hook. I don't want them to wrap around. So you kinda just gotta stick your finger in there and guide it so that it stays right on top of the hook all the way into the bend, okay? So once I get down to the bend, I wanna take it fairly far down into the bend Get it right about there, and then I'm gonna start wrapping back up. No, don't cut off that uh, the front of it there, guys, because we're gonna need that. We're gonna use it here shortly. Greg Barella thinks your nails are beautiful. Oh, thank you, Greg. That Jen, means so much. And Jen wants you to wear nothing but your new nails. <laughs> of course, she he does. Jen just wants to see my coconuts. What can I say? She's uh, she still hasn't made good on that date though. So she now that I've, uh, I've brought my thread all the way up to the front, up by the eye, I wanna make sure I bring it right up to the eye. I'm, what I do guys here with thread is we're not putting any body material on this. So the, the only thing that's creating uh, the body itself is the thread. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take it one more time. I'm gonna go back and lay another good layer of thread all the way down into the bend, creating just a little bit more bulk and obviously, if you're tying this on like a size 20 or even smaller, you would probably not have to go back down, but this is this is a little bit bigger for a blue wing. 16 to 18. Um, 18 is probably a better blue wing size for us up here. Um, we'll take that back up, and we're gonna go all the way up to the eye again. So all I've done is create a little bit thicker appearance on that guy. Oh, there. Tim's okay. teeth in the next episode. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. 
So now what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna take that dubbing that we provided for you. This is just an olive colored dubbing, like so. We're gonna build a nice little thorax. And I like to say, like, I want it to be plump. <laughs> plump, but not overdone. So you can't overstate this by making it too big. Um, plump is why we have the water tonight yeah. <laughs> on the baking cam, because I am plump. Yes, plump is a, I'm not gonna say you're plump. I think no. you look beautiful you just the way you are. You think I just the See? way. I so gotta you, get the you, guitar and start hard actually on sing. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, give you Don't compliments. ever say hard on and me in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> if you oh, want man. this show to go south, yeah, that's gonna happen. You just did. You just pointed it south. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm gonna take some of that dubbing. I'm gonna create a short dubbing noodle. Okay. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up a bit of a thorax. Then I'm gonna pull my mallard flank over. This one's gonna be done in no time, guys. So hang tight. All I'm doing is remember we do it in one direction. One direction. Yeah. Oh yeah, I need a One Direction uh, no. sound effect. I need a One and Direction T-shirt. That's it might, what I need. It might go something like this. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta yeah. Google it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make it. I will you, be... a, you don't even know a song, do you? Yeah. No, you do. Oh, you got man. their albums. No, I don't. I've never heard them before, ever once. Um. Okay, so I'm I gonna... saw you in your underwear <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> what? And it did was you? One Direction. Oh man, you did see me in my underwear yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> just tie not, the, not tie just the my, fly, Not just my Tim. regular underwear, but my long underwear, your too. Long, your long ones. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start this thread right up by the eye. And I'm going to start creating this little bit of a plump thorax. I don't want to take it too far down, so I'm going to stop it before I get to that hook bend. And I'm going to come back in, take one more little bit of wrap over it. Make sure I can finish that dubbing. What's so your favorite so, One Direction song? Maybe I can play it. I told you, I don't even know any of their songs. I've never heard them. Tim, so. Tim this is a place. This is a safe <laughs> this place. Is a, this is not a safe this place. This is a safe, this is, this is literally and comfortable the, place. No, that's what the frog said right before he got boiled to death <laughs> in a pot of water. Yeah, well, it was like a bathtub. <laughs> okay, so we're almost there, guys. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this mallard flank, and we're going to pull it up and over right over top of that thorax and we're going to take a thread wrap right where we left our thread and lock that down. I'm going to take one, two, three. Should be all we need. Okay. So now when you look at the top of that, you see how we have that nice um, barred marking from that mallard flank up on top of the thorax. Looks really good. Just looks like a wing case that's about to start emerging on one of these, uh, these blue wings. Okay. Now, now that I've got that secure, I'm gonna grab some scissors. I might just conveniently use some of my short scissors because they're handy and they're the best. I'm gonna come in here and I am going to snip that off as close as I can. And now I'm not gonna do a ton more wraps. I'm gonna kind of teach you a neat little trick here. So when I wanna cover up some material and kind of um, like, so for instance, this little tag here I wanna cover up, I don't need to wrap back over it, come back up and whip finish. I'm just gonna start my whip finish. And I'm gonna actually add my whips as I go. I'm gonna just keep whipping backwards farther down the fly Devo. and that is going to bury that material so i'm going to come in here like we always do and when we do our whip finish i'm going to come in stab my thread with the with the hook wrap around the butt allow it to twist and come up vertical now i've got my number four okay and i'm going to draw that down to the fly now i'm going to wrap i'm going to start wrapping rearward so that's two three four now you can see i've covered up that material and take one more just like that. I think I found Old your type. favorite song Did by you? One Direction. What's it called? I don't. Hang on, hang on folks. Oh, hang on. <laughs> so the last last piece of this, guys, that we need to do, we need to take just a little drop of some head cement. Story of my life. Oh, you got it. I take her home. I drive all night just to keep her warm inside. <laughs> yeah, I've never End heard that. Time. I was just guessing the words. <laughs> I have. I'm looking at the words. I'm just gonna do a drop Story of some Sally Hansen's Story of my right life. <laughs> I drive all night just to keep her warm. Is, uh, is that? Did you guys? Is is, is anyone? Uh, Has everyone left? <laughs> is anyone? Because you have, should. It's not this, gonna get better. Uh, excuse me, folks. Is this thing still on? <laughs> the story of my life. I drive all night. <laughs> You're supposed to sing with me. I'm not, I don't know the words like you do. You're reading them. There you are, folks. 
That is the WD-40. WD-40. It's like that. <laughs> That's See, when it's really easy like that, we can just play. Yeah, playing's a choice. You can do it or not do it. Judd Cherry. Uh, your bingo card, if you've received one in the last three weeks, it should be good. Yeah, okay, Michelle Reed, that's offensive. Scaryoke, this is karaoke. <laughs> karaoke. Andrew, like Andrew Warren, you could suck it. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know, that is a fine musician, and I, oh, yes. I'm i not, okay? Andrew. Tim, are you ready on the count of three? I'm, I'm ready. What are you singing? Your favorite song. Well, you got to give me some words. I don't know. Story. I've 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 You gotta keep singing. I don't keep know where it's her warm inside. inside. No, it's not about her insides. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm trying, man. I guess it's gonna look up the words because I don't know them. Okay. Well, we will come back to Tim's One Direction. Yeah, that's special. They're a good. They're a good uh, group. You know. Wow. Very good. Very good. Oh, All right, folks, so we did put that little drop of head cement on there. It looks a little darker at the moment, but it's going to dry and look just identical to, the, to it was before we put it on there. I prefer my Sally Hansons for these flies. Um, speaking of nail polish, it's pretty good stuff. So do that because you don't want that wing case to come undone because then you kind of lost it. And that is our first fly of the night, yeah, folks. That's, that's, a, that's ta- look at Just wait. Look at this thing because you have to have these things if you want to catch a lot of fish. That's a true story. Because that fly works, folks. They don't have to be complicated to work. That works. That I'm works. back. You might have just you might recognize her from such uh, <laughs> albums as One Direction. Uh-huh. That's, the, that's the name. The backup. Of the I was a backup guitar singer. Backstreets uh, back. All right. Yeah. So, folks, that's about it for my musical talents. If you're here for that, you're <laughs> Leave. you're the yes, <laughs> just bye. See you later. Okay, so that was the WD-40. And, so we said uh, we would talk about it a bit. Let's talk about where we would fish it. talk about it. Where it fish it is in the rivers. <laughs> You're where, one helpful fella. Where do I hope it lends and ends up? In a trout's mouth. In a trout's mouth. Okay, so blue wing olives. But you can also probably fish this as a caddis because caddis yeah, really. are green and look like this. Yeah. So uh, as a dropper just my opinion probably go more of the dropper blue wing type thing uh but if you're gonna fish it deeper and uh which if you tie the pogo rig which we're gonna show you in a few (laughs) minutes you're gonna get deep folks and then i definitely think it would work as a caddis yeah larvae larvae uh yeah so mark said at some point his head cement turned into a shrunken puddle of hard glue well if you mm. leave it open, that happens. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of... Uh, how would CDC be tied in? Well, that's a good question. So how we would have done this differently, if I had some on my hat, or had some right here, I would show you. But, um, you know, when we when we uh, we built the thorax, just before we'd have added that dubbing, we would have tied one clump of CDC um, right off the middle of the thorax. So it would have come up kind of... Oh, so you're talking about right true here. merger style. Yeah, more yeah. of a true merger style. So, And then what we would have done, instead of folding our mallard flank back over top we would have split them so there was two sets we'd have gone around the cdc and then tied it down so we'd had one little plume of cdc that would have come right out the middle here and then we would just cut it off you know about yay like right about here and then we if we were fishing it as an emerger um, you wouldn't have to fish that as a merger because technically speaking those wings are emerging but you could fish it under the surface but if you wanted to you put just a little bit of floating on the cdc um, like a Loxa or something like that. That's what we like to use in our CDC. And then that thing would sit right in the surface film. Um, and hard to see, yes, absolutely, but that's where we would yeah, tie well, in that CDC. <clears throat> that's, that's sometimes catching fish, folks. It's hard to see. And so Chaz has a good name for my new band, or my old band, called the uh, <laughs> Shrunken Puddle of Glue. That's good. I will do my best to make that happen. Yeah, so. Yeah. Folks, now that we've tied up the WD-40 and you guys have crushed this, Cam hasn't broken a thread. (laughs) I've played you probably one of the greatest renditions of (laughs) One Direction that you've heard. That only leaves us with one thing left to do at 7.51 because it's bingo time. It is bingo time. Actually, what we're going to do, hold tight with your bingos because what I want to do first is show you the... uh, 
the, the pogo are, rig. Oh, the pogo oh, and the oh, giveaways. Yeah. I'll yeah. show you. What do you want me to do, Tim? <laughs> I was thinking you could start with the giveaways, okay. go to your show, and then we'll okay. come back. You must see my show. Uh, I'll just be over here grabbing the giveaways, or maybe Tim can hand them to me. Yeah, I can get them. That's em. better. I can get them. Look em. at him. Watch him, guys. Hey, Tim, grab the giveaways. <laughs> Tim, grab, grab the giveaways. Hey, what happened to you wow. earlier? What do you mean? Do you like my new hat? That's a large logo. Uh, could you use something like partridge in a pear tree instead? Um, yes, I think so. Partridge would be, so the markings are different, guys. What we're trying to do is with, with the, markings the markings that you have um, on this specific pattern, you're just looking for that barred appearance. And kind of the unique thing about partridge is it actually isn't barred, it's like polka dots on the feather. So would it work? Absolutely, probably work just fine but I wouldn't be wasting my good partridge treasures on this. Mallard flank is very inexpensive for a large bag of it, whereas... So Tim, it's yeah. just me on the camera, so... I know, that's fine. They if you hear. have something to say, Tim, it's let sultry, me know. Sultry sound in my voice. That's and I'll all throw need. you in. Oh, okay. Well, now it's a little later. I already had something to say. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, it, there's nothing wrong with varying, varying the materials, guys, especially on flies like this that are super simple. Use what you have, and uh, I just prefer... The mallard flank died in wood duck just because it's very inexpensive. Um, yeah, cheap, you don't want to waste yeah, it. So. Cheap. Okay, so cheap, yeah. if you do tie the CDC in, what do you use on the CDC? We talked about it, folks, and the answer is Loxa. Can you read that? Is that fine? Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to put just on the CDC, and it's going to help because this stuff is good for CDC as a floatant. Yeah, really good. So what Tim wanted me to do is talk about the bingo giveaways, which we're going to come back as soon as we get. We're going to do the uh, the halftime show, which is the rig setup for Nymphy and what you guys have been asking for. Uh, and when you come back, the bingo give the winner is going to be an Orvis Clearwater seven weight, seven weight uh, from our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. They got the caddis fly hatch box there's a lot of flies in there you see this <clears throat> okay this thing is loaded with uh the caddis fly hatch box so it's dries and nymphs um and different styles of caddis the other thing here folks is because we tied this last week is the march brown Okay, the March Brown Hatch Box from our friends at RockyMountainFlyShop.net. They sell Norvice if you're wanting to get one. And it, hey, if anyone bought a new Norvice this week, give me like these emojis because <laughs> welcome to I the Norvice family. From your friends at Thursday Night Live, we're going to include one of these Thursday Night Live keychains. Okay. And from our friends at Drift Out West Fly Fishing, we've got a sticker pack. So some of their cool stickers that they've come up with, the Alberta fish, the drift out west upside down fly fishing, the drift out west fly fishing Alberta crest, and the arrowhead from our friends at drift out west fly fishing. So this entire package is, what? That's not enough? Okay, well, let's <laughs> add in this hat, this rally cap from our friends at Shore Fishing. So. Nice. All of this stuff is going to go into the bingo giveaway. Probably a couple hundred dollars worth of gear for you guys. Like, that's a pretty cool package. Yeah. I'd say so myself. You did say so yourself. You're right, Tim. <laughs> How's it feel to not be on camera? But That's great. I only like hear it. your voice. So oh, loaded big. boxes are the best. There's the website to fly over Rocky Mountain Flash Up .net, So I'd assume there will be no... There will not be another catastrophe of technical difficulties <laughs> at halftime show. Well, Matt, we can't guarantee anything. Stay tuned. We can't even guarantee that our mics are right <laughs> as we came to that. So, okay, folks, without much further ado, I want you guys to sit back. I, I ask you to grab a pen and paper because you're going to want to write down. And if you don't get to write it down, at 930, this video we're about to show you, it posts to YouTube, so it will live there eternally. So you guys can go back and set this up and let us know. Uh, have you ever fished a rig like this? And if you have, have you killed yourself doing it? <laughs> because it is dangerous. So here we go. We'll see you in a few minutes. We're going to play this uh, Fly Fishing Academy episode. 
and uh, we're gonna go from there. We'll be right, and then after that, we're gonna get into bingo, and then we're gonna tie the ex caddis. We're gonna go into what's your win for the week, and then uh, that should be about midnight. So, <laughs> all right, here it goes, folks. Hold tight. Well, hello there, folks. It's uh, Dana Ladder with the Fly Fishing Academy. And what I want to go over today with a lot of requests from you guys is how to set up a nymphing rig. And now there's a lot of different ways, but what I want to show you guys is how we set up a nymph rig um, that's not using a tapered leader. Uh, if you think about the mechanics of nymphing with chucking an indicator and a couple of flies, the tapered leader is kind of a waste. And so now tapered leaders are expensive. And so you shouldn't really have to use one uh, when you're nymphing. Now, if you're out on the river and you're dry fly fishing and you have a tapered leader and you do switch to nymphing, that's fine too. But here's a pretty cool way to set one up um, and you're gonna save yourself a lot of money by not using tapered leaders. So ideally what we're gonna do here is just use a couple of things of floral. Uh, we got some 15 pound and eight pound. And now the eight pound is kind of up to you depending how light you wanna go. Uh, that's that's what you're gonna have to decide. So first of all, what we need to do is we're just gonna take our fly line here and make sure that we got nothing. So we're gonna first build what we call a loop to loop connection. So initially from the fly line, I'm gonna create a butt section, you know, 10, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14 inches. Something like that is kind of what I'm gonna go after. Not really a particular science to it, um, but we do wanna build a butt section. And so that's why I have the 15 pound floral here is because I'm gonna take something like this. Make sure you got yourself something to cut it with because your teeth, uh, they're not gonna do well. That's about enough for my butt section. So you see, Maybe that's 14, I don't know, something like that. So the first thing we gotta do is we have to create a uh, loop knot at the top, which I can definitely show you guys that. So in the butt section, we got, we create one loop. And now I like to stick my forceps in here in the loop and just kind of pull it tight. And then we're gonna cut off the tag of this. And then in the other end of this, we're gonna create uh, another loop. So basically we have that 12 to 14 inch butt section with two loops in it. Tighten it down and we're gonna do the same thing with the forceps. Come back, tighten down that loop and then cut off the butt section. Okay, what you can even do is you can take some of your older leaders that are uh, pretty chewed up and short and you can just cut this butt section off of a tapered leader that you no longer use because it's gotten too short. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to put this fly line through the loop and just connect that loop to loop. We'll feed the butt section back through the loop, pull it through, Oop. Okay, we've got a loop to loop connection here. Essentially what most of your leaders are anyways, they do have that loop that is built in and then you got your welded loop on your fly line. So just loop to loop with our butt section. The next thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna take, I'm using eight pound here. It's what I wanna use today. So we're gonna take this and now this is gonna be the length of our leader. So roughly I go about six feet is my height. And then I kind of double back halfway and maybe I'm somewhere in that eight, nine, whatever, however uh, long you want your leader. Simply just cut that off. Is it long enough? Well, that's something you again have to decide, but that is going to be basically the length of your leader. And then again, at the top of this section of eight pound, I'm just gonna tie another loop knot because I'm gonna go loop to loop with that butt section that I created. I'm gonna grab my forceps, I'm gonna go back in, 
and I'm gonna tighten that loop down. And I'm going to cut off the butt section. So we got another loop to loop here. You can also, if you want, you can tie a clinch knot, uh, whatever you want. I find that a clinch knot or other knots, sometimes they break here. So just trial and error will be your friend through that. But I like to go loop to loop. Feed it back in, just as we did on the top section. Finishing off this loop to loop and then pull the leading line all the way through. Right, now I got another loop to loop connection, super strong, it's not a, it's not a knot, it's just loop to loop. And now basically that is gonna be my length of my leader. So why the butt section like this? Well, because this is where you're gonna put your indicator. Okay, your indicator, so now you can change the depth of what you're fishing at about a foot. So you can move it up or down. The reason that I like this is because that indicator isn't gonna slide past this loop to loop connection. You know, after a lot of casting, sometimes we find our indicator has slid all the way down. Now that indicator is not gonna move past my butt section. So if, if you feel throughout the day, you're gonna have to extend the depth two feet, then make your butt section two feet. And you'll see we're 15 pound to eight pound. It's clunky and it's not tapered. But that's okay because as soon as we attach an indicator on this, it's, it's gonna take out that tapered advantage anyways. So I don't normally put my indicator on first, but for sake of showing this, right? We wanna go a little deeper. We just loosen this up, boom. And now I'm 10 inches deeper. Don't judge me on my measurements, but some, Somewhere in there, right, Ren? Yeah. Okay, and so then if we just want to go a little shallower, I can move that all the way down. And it's it's not going to cast, it's not going to slide itself on your cast past this. So the thing is here, if you decided you need to go way longer, or if you needed to go way shorter, then you're going to cut this, this eight pound floral here, and then you're going to retie your loop to loop and now you're shorter. So if you, you do have room to move if you need that, if you need to go shallower. So quite simply from here, you have options and that's totally up to you guys. You can tie a fly on here. You can tie, um, you can tie to the eye and then you can tie off of the eye and you can go down to your second nymph and you can go on to your third nymph if, if that's how you're fishing. Or what I'm gonna show you here, which is a little trickier, is the, the tag part of it. Okay, so if we're gonna fish uh, two flies, I can tie a tag about seven or eight inches up top here. Or you can tie two tags and you can have two flies and then you could put your, your split shot on the very bottom. So let's, let's go over that, we'll just go, we'll just go all in. So, Cut yourself off another piece of floral of the eight pound. Something like this. I know this is probably hard to see here, but let's go up 12 inches, do you guys agree? And then all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna tie our two pieces together and we're gonna tie a double surgeon's knot or triple if you want. Double, one, two. You could tie a blood knot if, if you want, but I don't see the purpose. Moisten your line, and then you're gonna tighten that down. And as you tighten it down, you're gonna see one of these ends follows with your leading line, and one of them hangs up just like this. So let's leave the one that hangs out as our tag, because it's gonna hang away from our our rig when we tie our flies to it. And then we're gonna go back to the other piece that is not hanging off of here. And then we're gonna cut that piece off. It's probably, uh... okay, so basically we'll call that a tag. And then we're gonna cut that off.
Okay, see that's on there. And then we're gonna go back down here about halfway to the bottom. And then we're gonna take the remaining piece and we're gonna do another double surgeon's knot. One, two. Again, a blood knot will work if you feel that's your favorite knot. Moisten the line and cinch it down. And we're gonna have another tag that hangs off. We're gonna go and cut this part that stays with the leading line. So make sure that you're not cutting your uh, actual original floral, make sure you're cutting the tag off. There's only one way to find out for sure and that's get this set up like this. So now I have two tags coming off my nymph rig and then I have uh, the original floral that's coming down the bottom. <coughs> and so what we're gonna do here to tie on a piece of split shot is we're gonna tie two overhand knots. The first one we're gonna slide all the way down to almost the bottom. And then we're gonna tie another one that is just slightly above it. So say a half an inch. And then in between these two knots is where you're gonna put your split shot. So you're gonna have a rig, once you've tied your flies on, on here, and then you're gonna have split shots here. Your rig's gonna bounce like this off the bottom. <clears throat> Why do we tie these overhand knots here? Because you're gonna put the split shot between those two overhand knots. The bottom one, the one lowered down the bottom of the river, that one's gonna stop your split shot from sliding off the bottom. And then the one above it, you've created a weak point in your rig so that if your split shot does get stuck on the bottom and you go to give it a pull, hopefully it breaks there. And so we only lose a split shot. So when we bring the rig back in, we can just tie those two overhand knots again, and then we can put that split shot in between it. But so basically you've got yourself, I would cut this one down just a little bit with my teeth. <laughs> and then uh, you've, got, you've got your tags, you've got your nymph rig, split shot on the bottom and two tags that hang off of your line like this. You've got a great setup here. So that's kind of a, a way to set up a nymphing rig with a butt section where your indicator goes and then straight floral, eight pound all the way down Either you tie two tags off of this setup with a split shot on the bottom. If you don't want to use split shot, that's fine too. You would just tie one tag and then the bottom would be your point fly. Or you could just go right from this eight pound, you could just tie on your first fly. And then off the eye of that, you could go down and tie your second fly. You could also go from the hook of the first fly down to your second fly and then tie on the eye of that. I don't prefer the eye to hook, hook to eye down like that. I like to go both flies uh, off the eye. So there is a nymphing setup that hopefully you guys can save money by not wasting your tapered leaders. Again, I'm Dana Ladder with Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters and the Fly Fishing Academy, and we'll see you next time. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, so that is, that was a two beer, that was a two, <laughs> Two beer uh, uh, nymph tutorial. A two beer nymph rig tutorial. So a lot of you guys had asked, we had talked about, uh, or we had told you guys that we were going to do it. We felt it was really tough to showcase that in the studio. So uh, we threw it together in a video. So we hope that that was informative. Like I said, at 930, it goes live on our YouTube channel. So uh, you can go back and take notes and uh, do what you need to do. But some of the funny comments you guys <laughs> threw out here and some of the more serious ones that we'll answer is, yes, it could have just been a video of Ren. I didn't need to be there. <laughs> but, uh, Lori Berkland, so new to fly fishing, and I've already learned a lot in just the last 15 minutes. So that is a big part of why we do this. This is tying flies. But what we're also trying to do is help you guys become better fishermen uh, yeah. as we are also on the journey of becoming better fishermen. Yeah. So as we learn things or we can help pass that knowledge along, we definitely will. Uh, Cam, Cam, what did Cam right say? There. Okay. <laughs> the best part, 
<laughs> about this way is that the indicator gives you a little heads up tap before the rest of the rig snags you in the back of the neck. I don't often uh, let clients fish this rig because somebody's about to get knocked out yeah. real, real quick. It's uh, actually almost an interesting combination, guys, because it's if you've ever Euro nymphed, it's actually the most similar yeah. to it because you're fishing that style heavy, 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 heavy at the bottom. It just kind of creating that moving line. So your split shot down here, tick, tick, tick. Well, the problem is when you go to cast that, it's like chucking a bait yeah, do caster because you have do all not of that. False cast no, it. It's like one pick up and one over and make sure you got a good yeah. old rainbow cast over your Be head. Be careful. So Steve says, OMG split shot guarantees I get knocked out with this. Setup. <laughs> so if Steve's not here next Thursday, folks, we, know we claim no liability for you and your pogo rigs. <laughs> um, yeah. So like Carl said, and we answered in the video too, was the reason we put the split shot at the bottom of that is because if the split shot gets snagged on a rock, hence the two overhand knots you lose the split shot and not your flies yeah um, and you will lose a lot of flies if you don't do it that yeah way. so mark says do you ever use loop knots for tags instead of a surgeon's knot instead of a double surgeon's I'm loop knots really for sure tags how you would yeah I'm, I'm curious because i don't know how a, a, um i have used loop knots for uh, a tag like really close to the indicator. So if I was fishing like the WD-40 on a nymph rig, I could tie it up high. Uh, but there, it would also slide. So yes, I wouldn't use it as a full-time setup. But I have quickly threw on the uh, non-slip loop knot or a perfection loop, and then I've tied the the fly through it. <laughs> His beer is <laughs> making me burp. very burpy. Uh, so yeah, Mark, is that what you mean? Um, no tight loops. That's <laughs> no, a fact. That's a fact. Lob. We say lob, lob, lob. Looks like a great recipe for a major tango. Well, when you see the thumbnail on YouTube for this <laughs> video, you will know what I'm Understand. saying. Uh, Vanna and Ren was priceless, and I hope you meant Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the water for <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> I think fishing nymphs is a bit of a mystery for a lot of people. Yeah. It is. It is. And so... Ask questions, guys, because uh, mm -hmm. once you dial that in, and Jen Lyle can attest to that. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Lori. Thanks, Doug. Ren was the star of that video. Yes, that <laughs> I know that for sure. Uh, Chuck and Duck, Lob and Duck. Yeah, hey guys, and that's not a that's not a go-to every single day type nymphing rig that we would use, especially like you said with clients. That's not probably what I'm going to fish. But what it does tell you is exactly what the fish are eating and where they are at. Because you go into you a get bucket, down to you're, yeah. you're in the bottom. You you go into a bucket, that fly is in the yeah. bottom. And interestingly enough, when you fish this rig, it's you got to relearn how to watch an indicator. You're yeah. not watching an indicator waiting for any movement. It's doing this the whole time, yeah. Yeah, and you're just watching for a difference in it in the tap because you it's ticking the the whole time. That split shot's tick 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 tick. Yeah. So if you want to use this exact setup. Um, you can take the tags off and like i mentioned at the beginning is your nine feet of floral tie your fly on there and then go down from there just like a normal nymphing setup or i guess there's no such thing as normal yeah that's our normal uh, but yeah yeah and then if you want you can tie the split shot higher up in the setup and then the split shot it's easier to cast and the split shot doesn't hit the bottom but what it does is it pulls down and then those flies uh bounce more near the bottom yeah. Uh, yeah. But that would so, be kind of the reason for using a heavy lead fly too, if you're using a wire worm or yeah. something, because that's going to drag you your can back do fly that. down. It's just you can do that with. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's fun. Nymphing's fun. A lot of people hate it, but uh, do not roll cast this, Tim. <laughs> just no. look. So if you are using this rig, look for the depthy water. <laughs> <laughs> If you never Tim, seen the depthy water. Tim calls the depthy water. So, yeah. So, <laughs> Steve Lyle, Jen Lyle, whatever you want to call him, her. Uh, that's how she works. So, floral. So, Sean has a question. Is this the same floral as they use for for gear chuckers or whatever? Yes. Ish. Okay. Uh, floral is floral. It's not secret. It's not a different kind of item for fly fishing. But when I commented back and said it's not all not all florals the same, that couldn't there couldn't be more of a better statement for that. Yeah. 
Because what happens is in, in cheap factories when they're making floral, it's the consistency of the diameter of the floral. So I don't know, it's like 0 0.012. So let's just say it's one, the diameter is one. There's parts in cheap factories when they make floral, it's one is the diameter and it goes down to eight. Okay, and then it goes up down to six and then it's back up to one. So there's, there's kinks or there's weaknesses in that floral. And you can actually take a cheap roll of floral and pull your fingers across it. And you can feel that floral change diameters. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to be in tune with having done that, but you can definitely do that. So do not cheap out on floral. I know it's expensive, but um, think, think about how much you've spent to get there. It's your day off. You've driven, you've gas, you've, whether you uh, take your boat, you got a shuttle. We've already spent all this money to get there. Why cheap out on something like a $8 roll of floral? Because we could have got a $5 roll of floral from the dollar store. Yeah, that's, fair? No, it's, it's fair. And to, to further state what that floral means is even inside the same company, like Seagar, for instance, they make different classes of floral. We, we tried out a different Seagar, it was the orange one, I think. And like you would, it would literally come back to you like a pigtail. The whole thing would be curled up, and you see your nymphs are never spreading out because they're constantly coiling back up. Um, I'm trying to think what they call it, the one we're using. It's like Invisa something, isn't it? The blue one? Yeah, I don't But I don't it, regardless, it's it's a little bit more expensive, but when you find the right floral, Orvis floral is very, very good. It's one of my favorites. Find the floral that you like and yeah. make sure it's good. So why do we use Seagar? Because we can get the bigger rolls. Uh, and for guiding, you're going through a lot of it. So yeah. I love Orvis floral, Scientific Angler's floral is awesome. Uh, Real floral is awesome. What you have to be careful is when you cross the brands, uh, floral and mono, floral could cut the mono. So just try it out before you uh, get into it. But I I love Seagar. I get the big rolls. I got a whole bunch of them. And uh, floral doesn't really go bad. Mono goes bad. Uh, so I don't have big rolls of mono. Um, that, that's kind of the reason why we got to be a little bit more careful with it too, is we have to dispose of it properly because it won't break down with yeah. UV, whereas the mono will. Um, but <clears throat> like Dana was saying, something is like, he basically said it without saying it is, check your floral. What does he mean by that? Tie a knot and tug on it. And in fact, in front of, in front of clients, yeah, I'll do it all the time. Down. I'll tie Oop. a fly on, I'm like, see? See, it's not me. Yeah, this is this is, is strong, him. right? It is, it is so him. it's you have to be uh, you check it because you you might just tie a bad. We all tie a bad knots sometimes and they slip. So if you if you check your knot before you cast it, you'll know because you don't want to you don't want to risk losing that big brown or whatever. Yeah. It is. So Carl, I don't know if you responded to somebody's question, but I don't know for sure what you said. But another question here from Matt was, uh, did you mention the different size of split shot? Um, so they're A B B B. Um, Maybe. it's basically one, two, three. It's just like a shotgun load. Um, if you're not sure of the sizes, get a multi-pack and then you can just see the size of the balls. You go he balls. go heavier <laughs> than you think. Like it's probably yeah. like a BB, um, on a rig like this. If you're trying to go deep, it's heavy. And I personally like to pick one heavy split shot over multiple smaller ones. But I, the advantage of multiple ones is maybe you can just keep adding one, but yeah. You can. I mean, it's. I can't answer those, and I can't tell you when the Copa John works. Uh, it's just, it's a fly that we got to try, and uh, yeah. So Ben had mono before, and it sucked. And so mono <laughs> has its place at dry fly fishing, tapered leaders. And I also mentioned in there how you guys know the cost of tapered leaders, and so we don't need to buy tapered leaders for nymphing. <laughs> Quinn says guides are never yes. bad at knots. <laughs> yeah, They're well, never. Maybe you're not. <laughs> well, I do remember my first guided trip, folks, and I couldn't even tie a clinch knot. That was an, it's that, was, that was awesome. That yeah. was a good day. Uh, so Ryan's talking about blue label versus red label. I think he said red label. Where did I come yeah, up with in that? The, his previous comments. Oh, yeah. So the better. red label cigar is stuff. stiffer than blue and better for turning over bigger flies. And the blue is better for smaller flies. So there you go, folks. I don't know which one we have, but uh, it works. So better than floral. Okay. So right. you guys came here for the bingo. 
<laughs> or in a glass and of water. And the glass of water. <laughs> like a tall drink of water here, folks. <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is because everything's going south. Nothing's going south except <laughs> Hinshaw. <laughs> Okay, let me turn this off. Hold hold tight. I gotta grab this. Grab the phone. Like a tall drink of water, Tim. That is what you are. Yep. All right, folks, get your bingo cards. If you do not have your bingo cards, we're gonna give you two seconds and you have the opportunity to get your bingo cards here if you didn't and you wanna participate and win some cool things. And as soon as the bingo card, the bingo game is done, what we're gonna do is jump back into the x caddis i think we're on call sequence 12. okay folks so it is four corners what's the best line to line knot a double surgeons um yeah yeah quinn is a tall drink of water with a touch <laughs> of lemon four corners folks uh diria ruffins um, blood knot's great, but blood knot's a tough knot to tie. So a well-tied crappy knot is better than a poorly tied great knot. Mm. If that makes sense makes to anybody. Sense. Um, the uni... Oh, turned off. The uni knot, the uni. double uni, is also really good. So you can do that too. But um, double, triple surgeons, I'm telling you... I have never had issues with that knot, and uh, but I have had issues with with my phone. <laughs> with my phone. <laughs> so let's see if this works. Okay, folks. So we're gonna start the game. We're gonna get three calls out or four calls out really quick here, and uh, we're looking for four corners, and we can talk knots after. Hinshaw keeps moving the goalposts. That uh, Sawaini. <laughs> uh, sweet. Get shut down. Sweet. Okay, should have got you guys the head size cinnamon bun. My wife <laughs> brought me home from Nanaimo. Well, Adrian, um, thanks, but no thanks because it's not here. I would eat it. Okay, so four corners, folks. We're looking for four corners on your bingo card. Um, if you can't tie knots, tie lots. That's a fact. <laughs> tie a sure. lot of knots. Get cheap lot. floral or mono at dollar store and tie a bunch. Okay, so number five. So we got tip up, tip up, tip up. Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School, which we're we're full. We're, we're full. full. We did it. After really? last week, folks, we filled up Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School for the spring session which is in two weeks and then we have the fall class which is in the third week of september so if you didn't get into the first class make sure you guys get into the second looking for four corners here four corners give us a bingo if you see it yeah okay bingo, bingo, bingo. it was just the bottom okay that's what they said after we tied them on a pogo rig <laughs> Comments aren't quite loading. Tim, why don't you get on your phone and maybe we can be a little quicker with the comments sure. there. That I can uh, do. It was just the bottom, which is commonly said by the real Jen Lyle. <laughs> so we're looking for four corners. Usually we need about nine to 13 calls before we get the four corners. Yay for God School. I'm so pumped. That is going to be such a blast. So many awesome people that have signed up for guide school. We had to push a couple people away till the fall next year, uh, but I believe they will be there for the fall. And uh, okay, call number eight, do not lean, do not lean. We're looking for four corners, folks. Four corners, four corners in the... Jade's caught bingo already, Jade. Really? Jade. John Gordon and Jade Roberts, tell us your number. <laughs> John already knows, put it in. One, two, zero, and five, two is Okay, Jade. so let's check out 52. Jade is... Boom, look at that. Okay, so we got a bingo there. 052 is, uh, what's the last one that they won on? It is, uh, it was just the bottom. Always blame your guide, the other left. Always blame your guide. Okay, so let's see what John Gordon got. 120. We're going to have to make this harder. You guys are awesome. Crazy. Jade's on a winning streak. John said he goofed. 
the other. Oh, yeah, John, look at that. Oh, too bad, buddy. Yep. Premature bingoing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Jade, you won. So if you guys didn't wow. see last week, the Epic. incredible. Devotion, uh, we'll say. The devotion to the 80s theme was fantastic. And but I Jade, wonder how much devotion was there for Morgan. Was he just along for the ride? Or well, did he <laughs> did get the mullet, so he got that the mullet. is super cool. So there it is. Jade wins the bingo. Awesome. She wins the giveaway. She wins the two fly boxes full of flies. Marsh Brown Caddis, the hatch flies from our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Epic. And she wins the hat, the rally cap, which I bet will look really good on Morgan with the mullet. Yes, it would look very and, good. And uh, some stickers from Quinn at Drift, with, uh, Drift Out West. My mic going bad again. Nope, just your mouth. Jade, if you guys win <laughs> next week, that's three. And you know what they call that? They uh, call that a winning streak. Two is, two is just two. The mullet <laughs> is bringing the luck. Awesome. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, oh, folks. Rat, oh, rat. That's fantastic. And the baking cam is not up because I have it in my hand. <laughs> and that's me and nice Tim, try. folks. Nice so, um, okay, we've done a lot of that conversation stuff. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get into uh, Tim tying the X caddis, which is a very simple caddis pattern, but very effective. And uh, Tim. All right, let's do it, guys. Take so, away. What else did we have to say? I ah, felt like we had something like, else. I don't know. You tell me. You I don't know, me. folks. I'll be over here thinking. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're going to go to our x caddis. So I'll stick one in the vise here for you so you can see it. Um, so we're, I'm going to use the same thread that I used in the last one. I'm just using olive colored. Um, and it's going to be UTC 70. X caddis. So what is the X caddis look supposed to represent? Well, it's supposed to be um, a caddis that is losing its shuck. So the shuck is at the back here. That's what it's emerged out of. And we're trying to kind of fish it in a transition between becoming a full adult, dry, and coming out of its shuck. So we're going to tie it on this. Uh, it's going to look very similar to this. Uh, we're tying it in a tan color. Very popular is an olive colored um, X caddis as well. But we're going to do it all tan tonight. Um, so we get the shuck in the back, very similar to the caddis we tied a couple weeks ago, um, as far as the wings concerned. In your, excuse me, in your package you have that deer hair, so just be careful um, that you don't uh, mess it all up. So try to keep the tips aligned the best you can. And also inside your dubbing in there, it's hard to see, but there's a little piece of zelon, or maybe it's antron. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, and it looks a little different, it looks like this. Okay, so I need you to make sure you keep that together because you're going to take about half of that, and that's what we're going to tie the shuck out of. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this hook in. So what hook are we using tonight? We're gonna use a standard dry fly hook. We're gonna use it in a size 14. A very, very popular size um, for all dry flies, but especially for caddis. Just a really good all around. There are lots of smaller caddis out there too, but there is nothing wrong. Um, or I, I would say not, not nothing wrong. It's just a really good uh, size for a caddis is a 14. So we're gonna, we're gonna start our thread about a third of the way back down the hook shank. I'm gonna get this wrapped in. I'm gonna lay just a little thread base down, just past the point. I'm gonna return it back up to where I started my tie-in. I'll go in there, and get rid of that tag end. Um, now I'm gonna go to that uh, the Antron or Zelon. That's what Antron is what it, it calls for um, in this pattern, but it, it doesn't really matter. What you're trying to find. All right, Teresa's got to head out early. We appreciate right, you tuning in and all the good <laughs> stuff that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Jazz hands? Is that what you want, Jazz? Jazz, Jazz hands? Jazz hands. You got them, buddy. You got them. Maybe those are the same color as your boat. Nope. Not bright enough. Speaking of which, did you name your boat yet? The whistleblower. <sighs> Not whistleblower. The whistler. Maybe the whistle dog. The whistle dog. I knew you would nope, remember. This, this one I'm going to... I wanted to do on my last boat and I didn't get it done, but on this one I'm going to get renegade put on the back nope, of this one. Nope. Yeah, I already stuck oh, on sorry. the <laughs> whistle dog. Not happening. Can't even watch with those nails. I like, know. It's distracting for me too. You know what we should do? Well, you're about to off. put that on. We got to say thanks to our sponsors. because, <laughs> cause, So folks, you just hold tight with that. <laughs> we'll be back in one second. All right. Here we go. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, Of 
great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your Fly Kia table will turn any space into a well organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. Timothy right. Hepworth let's and the it. Whistle Dog. Okay, folks, sorry to keep you hanging in there, but. Uh, All right, let's do that's it. That's almost the camera that we wanted. <laughs> I almost uh, tied this in on you. So if you split that Z or Antron, whatever you want to call it, we, uh, we I took half of the material that you have there. Let's take half of it. We're going to tie it in right back here. And we're kind of marking this spot because this is where we're going to tie the, the, the deer hair in up at the front. Okay. So I'm just going to take my scissors. I'm going to make sure I have this trimmed off flat. Like so. Now I'm going to take a wrap, a clinch wrap, get it tightened down. And now I want to keep this material right up on top of the, of the hook shank. Okay. So just taking nice touching wraps all the way back. I'm going to take this all the way to the edge of the bend, but not into the bend. Okay. I'm going to leave it right like that. Now, what length do I want this? Somewhere just shy of the overall length of the hook. So you want it to look like the shuck is trailing means that it's starting to slide off the back of the caddis. Oh, look at that. So we want Chaz it to Chaz picked up on your earring. <laughs> what? What earring? The dangler on the other side. Oh, yeah. I, okay, carry on. Sorry, I'm my, distracted. The piece of my heart lives in the 80s, about roughly two years of it. That's it. Quinn, uh, Drift Out West's boat is on hold because of fiberglass shortage. Well, uh, our boats just went up 20 percent because of fiberglass shortage yeah that was a bit of a my boats for sale sixteen thousand yeah. dollars <laughs> shoot me a message twenty one thousand dollars next uh, week folks well yeah right along with the real 19 estate. million <laughs> yeah so i'm just going to take a measurement that's roughly um the overall length of the hook shank i want to cut that out a scott nelson appreciate it brother see, scott have a fantastic tonight. night we'll see you next thursday and i'm gonna trim it off okay like so um, now we have given you guys, if you have our package, we're just using a, a light tan because we're going to tie this kind of an all tan pattern. Um, we're going to take that. We gave you enough dubbing to do all 50 of these. We're just going to take, take a nice little pinch and we're going to create another dubbing noodle. Okay. And not a super thick one. We want it to be just kind of moderate. Um, we're going to make it about two and a half inches long, maybe three, four, maybe four. Who nine. knows? Who can, who can judge length anyways? I, I, I had that disclaimer earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all I'm going to do here um, is we're not trying to bulk this up a ton, guys. We're just going to put a nice um, layer of dubbing. Yeah, making scraggly. All the way up. Okay. And I have just a smidge too much. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. Off my thread. Get it out of the way. Try not to cut my thread. Cut your thread. <laughs> not this time. All right, April Dawn's first time tuning in. My ass, the nail polish. Yes. <laughs> we thought hey, you would never ask. Uh, this so. is funner because the new people is there like. It's more fun, Tim. Oh. Get your grammaratically right. It's more fun. There's a lot of things more fun. Anyways. Anyways. Nail polish. I don't know because people, uh, people are always hating on my nails, so I decided to get them done. Soon, yes. Are you fishing tomorrow? Should be. I wish. Wish I was fishing. Okay, folks. You never can tell, April, and that's okay because, hey, <laughs> if you've tuned in before, you would know that people made fun of Tim's nails for a long time. A long, so. long time. <laughs> <laughs> Stop staring at I'm me. Staring. You, April, you might want to ask him about the uh, earring. I don't know. What and if it about. is your first time tuning in, you might want to go back and check last week's episode. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You should do that. We weren't able to crowdfund enough. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks no, a lot, weren't. guys. So, guys, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build our wing, okay? And this, literally, we're going to do the wing and we're done. This is such an easy pattern to whip out wow. of these. Um, what we want to tie this out of. So, we're just going to do some bleached deer hair. I like this stuff, especially when it has, um, you can see the guard hairs up here. They have just nice coloration, darken out a bit at the tips because that's what we're going to be using. Now, how much do you use? That's a, that's a really tough, a tough thing to tell you. It, it takes a little bit of practice of getting used to holding the hair in your hands and even still like what I just cut off this patch right here is too much. I know that, but I like to have a little bit more than I need. 
Um, I like to come in, get out all that under fur, those longer pieces. And then what, after I stack it, I'll make the decision on how much I want to get rid of. Okay, so we're going to grab your hair stacker. We're going to need one of those. And let's put the tips in it. And then we're going to give it a couple of good thumps on the table. Oh, is that your deer stacker? That's my deer how stacker. How many deers you got in there? Lots of deers. Lots of deer hairs. <laughs> inside jokes, folks. Inside jokes. That's not an inside joke. <laughs> That's an outside joke because you jokes. can't have inside jokes. No, 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 no. Not allowed inside anymore. No, that's a true story. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I pull this out, orient it in the direction that I want it to go. So I know my tips are at the bottom, so I'm going to tip my deer hair stacker this way, and I'm going to pull out <laughs> so that my... Oh, uh, <laughs> Tim. Do you need me to play some more One Direction on my guitar? <laughs> Maybe not. If you guys are new to the show, this is how it goes. But please don't leave because we have the favorite... My favorite part of the show coming up in about five minutes. Yeah, we do. The what's your win? So do stick. <laughs> get those sales. It's so, I know, bad. It's so I gotta, bad. I got to play some music oh, for man. it. Okay, guys. So these tips here, we want to keep them aligned. We're going to pinch them out of the stacker. And now I'm going to make the decision on how much hair I want. So I like to come in. Tim's nails oh. are yellow. Yes, they are. Sing me a sweet serenade. If I were Tim's nails, I'd be I would never go in nose. his mouth. <laughs> nose, no. Digging for okay. gold, folks. I Digging will play gold. you guys a song in a few minutes. Just hold tight. <laughs> okay. So I've taken a little bit out of that clump until um, I just feel like it's the right amount. And I like to lay it on there and get a look tracks. at it. That's okay, the best tracks. Okay, tracks. That's what I needed to talk about. Sorry, what? Tim. What are you talking about? Tracks party on Saturday in Old. Oh, sorry. Tracks party. Carry on. Anyways. We're going to extend the very tip of that uh, hair just past the hook bend, okay? And then once we tie it and it flares, it'll stand up a bit. So just past the hook bend, I'm going to lay it there. Now I'm going to grab, and this is important, switch hands, and you need to keep it pinched, okay? Because you want all of this hair to stay on the top half of the hook, okay? So we don't want it to spin around, so I have to pinch it pretty tight. Now how I'm going to do this, I'm going to take one light wrap. I'm going to actually cord this up really quick, so I'm just going to spin my bobbin. I'm going to take one light one. Take a second light one. Now that I've got two all the way around, I'm gonna pull my bobbin straight vertical. So it's come around and now it's straight vertical. And I'm gonna pull tight right there. Pull. You can see how it flared. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a few thread wraps moving forward. So tight thread wraps binding into those butts. Okay. And you're gonna they're gonna move around on you, but don't worry about that. We'll we'll deal with that in a second. Until I'm up near the eye. Okay, now I'm gonna let go with my fingers. Look at that flared the wing just the way we wanted to. It's extending. You can see those black tips extend right out to about there. Now all this, the rest of the stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and grab all of it. Grab all that hair. And I'm going to take some, um, we're going to build a bit of a dam. So we take some dam, some dam wraps, some dam wraps. Wrap the dams. Yeah, it's supposed to start being built on Monday, but the builders are not receiving glass. What are you getting, uh, Quinn? I'm curious. Know, Quinn, he's getting better, a row. He's better getting not be a stealth craft. Quinn? Tell us, bro. Oh, he's chauffeuring tomorrow. He can't fish tomorrow. Uh, so all I'm doing, guys, taking a few thread wraps. What that's going to do is that's going to help that front nose to stand up. Now, I don't want to let go of it because I'm going to come here and trim this, okay? I'm going to kind of take an angle of about 45 degrees. I'll try to get my fingers out of the way. I'm going to come in here. Snip. That's the head we want on this fly. Now, if it went a little wonky on you at any point or you feel like the shape doesn't look quite right, you can always go in there and shape it a little bit with your scissors. Just don't get too crazy. You want a nice, a nice bulky head like that. Um, and then all I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go in here and whip finish it. If you have any hairs from the wing that, that extend below on either side, I like to just come in here and take a look. I do have a couple down there. Yeah, those, I'm look, those look at this, the Jean Indiana. She's making fun of the nails. Come on, guys. Come okay, on. Cody. Eat Five beer. Don't leave, folks. We've got the best part of the night <laughs> coming up right around the right corner. Away. And surprisingly enough, it's not Tim's nails and it's not my guitar <laughs> skills. So all I've done here, guys, I'm going to do two, I'm going to do two, um, two half hitch knots. So I'm going to go once, twice around my half hitch tool or whatever hollow thing you have. Pull it off, do it twice or three times just to make sure that's not going anywhere. All I'm going to do is go ahead in, trim that out. Yellow. And it's all yellow. And on this one, guys, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go in with just a touch of my Sally Hansons. And 
and that is going to be your x cat a super simple pattern fish it as a dry fly anytime you see cat is buzzing around not a bad bad idea to give oh, it a go don't touch your dry flies with glue you have to i have a stealth three man and the road to is in the wee 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 q the q -E. q u e the q u e Rows are terrible. Why do they even add the U and the E? Like, are they like, hey, why don't you come along and join me in this word yeah. named Q? If you just put a Q, it would make <laughs> yeah, sense. Yeah, I think so, but <laughs> then they would think it's Quinn. All okay, right, Richard Bitterman. Holy cow, it's Richard Bitterman, folks. It's been a hot minute. It's Where been a COVID. Been? We say COVID minute. It's been a COVID minute, which means 18 to 19 months. That's a good fact. Whew. The Flames aren't playing tonight, so Richard's <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Oh, Grimshaw. Okay, so that is your X-Caddis, folks. Make sure you got a few of those in your box. Maybe some nail polish removed in your box, too. I'm playing it. Oh. What are you playing? It's called Coldplay. Oh. Yellow. Put that Sally Hansen's. Oh, that's a good point. You do have the Sally <laughs> Hansen. So. I should. But I don't want to clear coat over this that I'm going to take off here in a hot minute. These folks haven't even seen my hot new... Cherry wood guitar. So, what we got to understand, folks, is the. Are you done? Oh, I'm done. I'm waiting done. on you now. X Caddis. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that dangler, folks. Oh, I forgot that's still dangling in there. from his ear. And uh, what's your opinion on aluminum boats? Oof. Well, my opinion is a lot of people like them. I've never personally. I've rode them, but I've never personally fished out of them for any period of time. What I do know is that aluminum does not glide nicely over rocks, which you are going to inevitably touch at some point in the river. What other downsides, I guess? Um, maintenance is probably a little easier, maybe. They, uh, they get dented and cleaned up easier, now maybe. They stick to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. All right, folks. <laughs> well, this... What I'm going to do tonight... Oof. Best part of the night. Yeah. I'm going to put my guitar away because nothing beats this. I'll put my ear away because also nothing beats this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we could talk about winds. We could keep talking about... Uh... Yeah. No, his daughter didn't do them. My daughter did them. So <laughs> that's fine. It was, we were in a rush. So April Dawn, you have a great night. <laughs> you great. obviously got to go, but you don't want to leave because this is the best part of the show, folks. And it's called, what is your win for the week? And the idea of this is just simply that we get to share some positive vibes that are happening in your lives and things that are in our lives because as uh, what is this about tracks? I will get to this. Hold <laughs> me to this, Tavis. I agree. Uh, so Tuesday. So just as we feel like we're on a path forward to freedom from this entire crappy COVID situation that we're in, um, we got the old kick in the back of the knees, dropped us and rocked us, that we're going to go shut down and go back into lockout because quote unquote, not trying to be political here. <laughs> I said that Don't for worry, Jen, Jen Law. <laughs> Political. Political. Is the idea is that, um, yeah. So it's like, oh, time and time again, we've we've seen this work. So there's a lot of uh, places that are getting shut down again. And uh, I know where I'm from, and Olds here, they refuse to shut down, okay? And I'm all in for that. I'm all in for sponsoring and supporting and all the good things about going to their restaurants because I get the idea of small businesses. Even for us going into to year two of no borders being open, it's absolutely devastating. And I, whatever your views are, that's your views. But here we are and things are going backwards and I don't think they deserve to be. Um, that's my rant. So. If you guys want Saturday night in Olds, Alberta, Canada, Tracks Pub is going to stay open because they are called to shut down at noon tomorrow. Uh, so come up to Olds and support. We'll go for a beer at the pub and uh, maybe we spend the night in jail. I don't even know because I don't even care anymore because I'm beyond the stage of caring. Uh, one of my really good friends owns the pub and I'm not going to watch him go down like this. Um, it's yeah. So 
Um, we can get this stuff going to tracks, folks. See you up there. Shoot me a text message. And, uh, yeah, stay home for 14 days and flatten the curve, they said. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about wins. So, Tim, you go first, brother. All right, man. Well, yeah, like Dane said, this week has been kind of a bit of a shot in the, in the old back of the knee, like you said. But uh, some good things that happened this week. I got out to uh, last week, or sorry, yesterday. We got to kind oh, of an, yeah. an impromptu day. day. And, you know, we, we had some good conversation about it because, I mean, it's easy to, like Dane was just saying, it's easy to be very frustrated with what's going on for us locally right here, especially when we look at the uh, areas around us that aren't, you know, maybe having the same um, same things happen. Um, but yesterday we just literally needed a day on the water and it wasn't about the fishing at all. Uh, we called her quits, <laughs> like, way early because it, it, it just when we didn't you know, need you it. know. Yeah, we're like, you know what? We got to drink a beer out there. We got to roast some marshmallows, hang out with Ren. Um, it yeah. was, it was a, it's hard to think sometimes to remember that we're blessed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are really bad around us, but I guess for me this week has just been finding pleasure in the, in the simple things. You know, this weekend I'm getting to go camping with my girls and go skiing. We're getting out for our first kind of go with our, our new rooftop tent. Excited about that. And uh, hopefully leaving some of this negativity behind and choosing to focus on what uh, what what is going to matter for us moving forward and just pray that things get better because what we've learned unfortunately is we don't have a lot of control over anything that's going on um, zero zilch nada yeah. but what we do control is how we express ourselves and how we choose to show up for the people that are closest to us because yeah. like we always say we're a light we're a beacon and if we decide to turn our light down because of what's happening we only affect the people that are closest to us so yeah very true yeah i doubled down on that win tim yesterday was uh i had a lot of work to finish up some video projects to finish and uh i told tim you're gonna have to go without me because i can't <laughs> yeah. leave and i can't i gotta get this done i didn't want to uh, go without him <laughs> so i got her done and uh we got a little bit of a late start it didn't matter we got out there uh the drive being out like it's truly we know that this isn't one of those epic fisheries it was more of a search and explore, but the idea behind it was just the drive out, eating beef jerky, pepperoni sticks, telling stories. Uh, we get out there, we take off to the river. It's just fun to throw a line in the river. Probably knew that it was a 1% chance of actually <laughs> catching a fish where we went, uh, but it was beautiful. It was incredible to see God's creation. Yeah. And that's always a really favorable thing when you get out into the wilderness, into the wild places. Um, got to spend it with Ren. I mean, you know, we've been, you know, I've been part of that journey since she was like this, this big and <laughs> yeah. changing her diaper on the tailgate and stuff. So, um, Special, man. yeah, it's a, it's pretty cool folks, even though all the crap that's gone down, uh, if you want to come up to Olds on Saturday, hit me up. We're going to go to track pub. Uh, we're going to support the folks because, uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, and I read something really cool today and I wanted to share with you guys. Because I thought this was just a quote that was like so cool. So it says this, and I want you guys to take this with you throughout the week and share with me some stuff that, that you do that fits this quote. So it says, want more for people than you want from people. Want more for people than you want from people. So, and if that's your mindset, mindset, you have a servant leadership role and you want people to, to succeed, and so you're a good person. And rejoice in it with them, because that's that's what this is all about. We get to sit here and read these things that people are yeah. their wins. Like, and we're trust me, we're happy we're to gonna read them. We're going to add them on now. Like, we're going to talk about them. Yeah. You guys are my big win. I don't have anything new to share. Love you all. Keep on rocking. Yeah, uh, Tom Pape is getting his COVID vaccine tomorrow. Uh, Jade Roberts, this is always the win. A double win based on the fact that she won double time. She did. Um, Steve Tucheniak, tough week with work, but I have a light at the end of the tunnel. Family is healthy and I get to hang with all of you every week. That yeah. is a win. TNL fam for the win. Yeah. Uh, let's see what Jeff started a new. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, Jeff started a new job after being out of a work for a year. So oh, that's awesome. man. That's, after, Congrats, that's so freaking awesome, Jeff. Uh, congrats, man. Uh, Sean, despite my wife tearing her Achilles last week, 
We decided to go skiing with the kids anyways to get out. I got my girls out on their first big mountain ski trip just before lockdown. My wife was a trooper in the chalet with crutches, but it was a great time. Huge win. Family time is always so awesome. Hey, guys, type in your wins here. We're going to share them on the screen. Uh, Greg says, I was out last Thursday for my birthday, but I went fishing and caught some fish. Fun fish. Not just fish, but fun fish. (laughs) Oh, Matthew was yeah, on vacay. He's vacaying it. Had an awesome vacay. Third and last daughter in the house picked a college in sunny San Diego. Yeah. Santiago. Santiago. Where daughter number two goes, win, win, win. But the wallet, lose, lose, lose. Come on, <laughs> Norvice and epoxy table. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a big That's a big win. Uh, Cole Clayton. Uh, big win for me. First time fly fishing in probably 10 years. Bought a new rod. Bug some of the boys on social media for tips and tricks, learning lots and having fun. Uh, loving the fact how helpful the fly fishing community is. Showed up with an empty cup and taking the opportunity to learn. Be awesome, a sponge. Dude. That's so awesome. Laura, we didn't get the weather that was forecasted and the sun was shining before supper. It is yeah, the little it is things. The little things. It is absolutely Appreciate. the little things. Bags, my win, a good night, Thursday fly time, and a great fir- first week at my new job. Buddy. Heck yeah. That's the stuff that makes me absolutely happy. Yeah. Chaz, my win this week is having a solid wife to support me, being a rough go, and she's got my back. This family, this community is such an amazing win. Love you guys. We love you too, love Chaz. You too, we buddy. cannot wait for guide school. Adrian, got to complete a ski tour that I've been wanting to do for a few years. Big day that I pushed me beyond my usual limits. Awesome day with really good friend and amazing. Did you see his photos? I did on Facebook. Yeah. That was so cool, man. I was so jealous of that. That was so awesome. That's great. Davis Kimball. Hi, I'm from another SA person. Glad to hear you got to see him. Have an uncle in Hillside. He was happy to see family again. Great. Mark, what's your win? I got to see some family over Easter and fish the boat twice with my brother, Rob Merkley. And we had a double header with two big rainbows, which was absolute highlight. <laughs> Terry Sather, the win is Thursday night fly time every single time. Mm. Jacob, what's up? My win was seeing my dad over the weekend and helping lift his spirits. My win right now is just getting a beer delivered. <laughs> um. All right. Drift out west. What time at Trax Pub? Well, let's chat. So let's say six o'clock. Um, they're going to stay open tomorrow, so we're going to see what happens with that. But let's make it happen, folks. Come up to Olds, to Tracks Pub, and make it happen. Uh, Chris Nelson, my one was Friday Outstanding Fishing. We also fished last Friday. <laughs> yeah, well, and, yeah, that's uh, true. Had it one was. of those better days on the Bow River that uh, you can have. So Alec caught his first brown this oh, week. Buddy, nice job. Looks like you don't need the practicaster rod that I have <laughs> been delinquent and dropping off for you. Yes, that's awesome, dude. Nice work. Yeah. Steve Johnson, why don't you read this one, Tim? Yeah, your show is a bright beacon and always a positive vibe. Just keep on keeping on, guys. We will, Steve. Thanks, man. We appreciate that. Yes. Mike Nervous. Really loved my time with you boys. First time, not the last time. Well, Mike. <laughs> Uh, so I, Mike, were you the one that I chatted with on the phone today? Cause I believe, uh, there was a mic that we chatted with. So if, if that's you, just let me know. Whistle dog float with my pals. <laughs> that's cam. It wasn't that's, just whistle dogs. Yeah. Come on. It's the first time cam's heard a whistle dog and you. Yeah. I never heard that. Which that's is great. pretty funny. So Patty, what's up? Hitting the water with the kids, watching the joy of them fighting a nice fish, mostly having them make the choices of keeping or releasing and understanding why conservation is a must to keep fish stocks healthy. Yeah, it's important stuff to teach, man. All right, this one's for you, Tim. (laughs) Saw my grandfather who is dying of stage four lymphoma. He got to see his great granddaughter and had big smiles. Also, my favorite quote is, somewhere out there, some fool is sitting near a river unaware of how afraid and angry he should be. Duncan Trussell. Trussell. That's great, man. Somewhere out there, some fool is sitting near a river, unaware of how afraid and angry he should be. Which tells you, folks, when you go to the river, nothing gets to you. No. Tavis. My win is having my first logger home, brew, 
my first <laughs> lager home brew bubbling away, and it should be ready for May. Awesome, dude. Love home brews. Uh, Jim James William Crawford, we debated bringing your win onto the screen because last time you crashed <laughs> us. But the show. Nice anniversary drive yesterday up to the headwater rivers and creeks, and they look great. Awesome. So, congrats. 42 years, I believe. It's a long 42 time. 42 years, years, folks. Well That's done, about man. as old long as I've been alive. Plus, a little bit. <laughs> All right. Davis Kimball, my dad's in the muse. Add me on Facebook. Send me a message. We should chat soon. Uh, ben, we got to go for a beer last week. That was pretty cool. Ben got to go out and visit his dad for the first time. So that was super cool. Nice. Uh, Kellen, almost. Am I saying it right, Kellen? I think it's Kellen. Almost done this semester of school. Been a tough year studying online. I can't imagine. Oh. The, the robbery that the students go through this year. Yeah. This brain isn't designed to learn that. Wes way. got Pfizer shot number two yesterday, and I'm feeling great. Oh, nah, nah, lucky nah. bugger. I did not feel great after my second shot of Pfizer. All right, Tim, this one's from you. Joel's right. back from Mexico. Being able to catch the show tonight was my win. Thanks as always, my friends. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Ron, Ron Croteau. Got my new Harley back together. Best way to go fishing. Oh, I bet, that yeah. is pretty cool. Colin English. Four days on the river last week and spent every night at home with my beautiful wife. Can't get any better than that. No. Nope. That's a fact. Cannot. Wes. Looks like he's fishing tomorrow. Fishing tomorrow. Yeah, buddy. All right. Claude Delisle. Had a barbecue with my three daughters last night. Have hardly seen two of them since last summer. Wow. That's fantastic. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Raymond, all right, here's a prayer request. Pray for my nephew, Braden McFarland, who is fighting for his life against cancer. Just started fly fishing last summer. Sad to see a young man fighting. Mm. Raymond, in our prayers, brother. Absolutely. We definitely will be praying for Braden McFarland and his fight for cancer. Mm. Uh, if you have more details, just send them to us so that we can help out with that. Yeah. And... Uh, Bob Warren, first time fly fishing in six months out here in Manitoba. No fish, but nothing but smiles <laughs> all day. Well, welcome to fly fishing. Yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell, right yes. there, folks. Yes. Bruce Cole, spent the day with my daughter, just the two of us hanging out, talking, playing some music, and just chilling. Best day in a long time. Oh, that's great. Man. That's fantastic, Bruce. Looks like Jeff is oh, win. Yeah. Garden has started. Second COVID shot was Monday. Campers cleaned up. Turkey season starts in 10 days. Turkey. Always so much to be thankful for. Um, way to support your friend, Dana. That's, that's the way, man. Yeah. Might, might spend my first night in prison, but... Uh... Yeah, well... Okay, so this was Mike. Well, Mike, we appreciate you tuning in. I uh, hope you learned lots, and we'll hope to see you next Thursday. And remember, Tuesday at Bover Brewing is where you will get your fly tying kits that we tied from tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you grab underneath the yellow highlighted paper, under the yellow highlighted paper the, down here, it's under your awesome Gilligan's Islands hat. That'll oh, yes. tell us what Let's is next week. next week. Michelle, my win was spending some much needed time with my family over the Easter weekend. Amen to that. Cody got to hit the water several times since our home water opened up on the first catch in a handful of beautiful 18 to 20 inch wild trout. Nice. All right, Brent, you have yourself a fantastic evening. Let's see what Joel's got to say. Watch my son-in-law catch a big redfish, finished a tough analysis at work, watched a judge for senior engineering day, and I'll lead it off the screen. Projects for <laughs> FAMU, FSU, College of Engineering. Looking forward to more fishing this weekend. Awesome. Redfish, I want it. Oh, man. I want redfish real bad. Yeah. Okay, Mark, thanks so much for another amazing Thursday night. Oh, we didn't put um, everyone, you guys make it much more special. Cheers, everyone. Good night, Mark. You have yourself a fantastic night. Make sure you come to Tracks Pub on Saturday because tomorrow at noon, the province has shut down all the restaurants and we're not going to let that happen. So, uh, James said that he got a Waffle House visiting oh. in Albuquerque, so I'm jealous. Lucky guy. The Waffle House is one of my favorite places. Never been. Uh, go Lobos. Mm. 
Yes. Okay. James' youngest son begins his varsity football season tomorrow, and I can't wait to be back on the field to live stream the game via Facebook Live. Double win. Double win. And I believe they have a four-game season is what he had said before. Yeah. Uh, And he caught his interception last week, I believe, in the exhibition games. Is that correct, James? Uh, Prison will be fun if we're all there. (laughs) Hey, it's all... That's great, yeah. (laughs) Where we go one, we go all, folks. So that's fantastic. Uh, yay, Michelle. I want a Montana trip with my friends. We do, oh, too. Yeah, we do too. Cody Frankie. Awesome show, guys. Have a wicked night. I'll see about making her to tracks. Don't see, just do. We don't need talkers. We need walkers. I just made that up. You did. It's good. It's good. It was a win to get the new barbecue going and fix up the deck. Likely going to spend a lot of time there. Thank you, Michael. And uh, guys, we've shipped out all of your, the fly that we forgot. Well, yeah, we forgot. It's an oversight. We have shipped them out. So you guys should be receiving a package in the mail, uh, hopefully soon. And I believe that's for episode 18. So yeah, uh, yeah. great show. Looking forward to next week. We always do. What is next week? So guys, next week on the docket, episode 17, we've got the Quill Gordon. And we have the Sparkle Pupa. Two great patterns. Sparkle Pupa is uh, one of my faves. One of my faves. Yeah. It's a couple of really great patterns. Don't want to miss those ones. Yeah. And if you guys come down to Olds and you want to play to crash, well, I have an illegal basement (laughs) (laughs) holding. All right, Ben. Great night and good night, everyone. Looking forward to supporting the businesses that plan to stay. Who's bringing the soap (laughs) for Saturday? Who's who's bringing the soap Uh, for Saturday? Let's keep it on the rope. Keep it on the rope. When things are going well, Cam goes offside and keeps yep. us all aligned. Keeps so. us all there. Oh, man. Well, folks, that's been an awesome night. Thank you for sharing your wins with us. Um, those motivate us. But something that we haven't said yet again tonight is remember that we're here for you. This community is here for you. We are honestly say this. Reach out to us. Find us on our Instagram or our Facebook. We'll, we're more than willing to have a phone conversation or chat, whatever you might need. We're no counselors, but what we are is a community and we can stand behind each other and help each other through hard times because we all have them um, and there's nothing to be ashamed of in that. So reach out, if not to us, add all these people you see here commenting to your Facebook pages and make some friends, guys. Get on the water together. Yeah, um, That'll feed your soul, I promise you that. Yeah, the, the whole group here, we've said it before and we'll say it again, but this entire group of people, add them as your friends, your family, you're not just people hanging out watching a live event of us being goofy sometimes <laughs> but the people here click on their names go over there add a friend send a friend request whatever facebook does uh seek them out on social media become more than just the uh tnl fam on thursday nights you guys can be more uh throughout the week reach out to us add us as friends follow us on instagram social media whatever it is uh phone numbers on the website if you guys need to reach out what I did notice was a couple of messages that I got on Instagram from, P- I don't know why, but they, Instagram kind of hides the messages. And uh, I think I was a week late to the party of those messages. So I apologize for some of the people that sent those messages and they were uh, put in the request folder. So make sure that you guys uh, find another way to reach out if, if we don't respond because yeah, we want uh, for some reason Instagram decides who shows up but uh, definitely make this uh, your fam because it yeah. is your fam um, well Matt, we, we're just a part of the whole thing mm-hmm. and uh, the world's better because of guys like you uh, one day we will all meet we will all meet and there will be hugs no matter what. If you have got to throw sanitizer on your whole body, I don't care. <laughs> I uh, Corey, bath. yeah, Corey, bath. <laughs> it's not happening. I'm just giving you hugs. So, uh, Patty, awesome as always. Thanks, guys. Keep on all the support local. Keep up the good work. Tracks yeah. Pub, Saturday night. Meet me there. Let's have a drink together. So if we have Chaz, we haven't even met Chaz. I know, which is mind blowing. Regardless, we're meeting him in two weeks. Yeah. So let's. Yeah. 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 Rusty Elements. Oh, That's Jacob. Jacob. Hey, I did Jacob. not know that. I did not know that either, man. Thanks for saying that. Now we do. It's awesome. Man. All right, Claude. It. Good night, everyone. Looking forward to being with y'all next week. Super. Another great show. Quinn, appreciate you tuning in and yeah, so bye. long. Doug Lindsay. Thanks, guys. You have a great night, too. We appreciate yes. you tuning in. Uh, Gene, 
There you go. You commented <laughs> and you're up. You're up, buddy. Uh, dialed in. Welcome back on the bow. Hope you all have a wicked season. You too, Gene. Thanks, we brother. appreciate you, your friendship, and the positive messages, attitude that you're spreading on the Bow River. We need more people like Gene and Quinn on the bow. Yeah. Bruce. All right. Thanks for another awesome night, all. Great show again. Appreciate the effort you put in each week. Can't wait to get on the water with you because that is coming real soon. All right, Joel, you have yourself a great night. Jeff, do not eat waffles past nine o'clock. <laughs> oh, and uh, we will better. That's that's the that's the best comment there. We will build a better community as a fam. Yeah. A hundred thousand percent. That's uh, about as truthful as it gets, guys. How about a season? You mean episode 21, <laughs> Doug, or we'd be waiting a long time for season 21. Oh, yes, man. that is something we could arrange yeah, for sure. Definitely. Uh, best show ever, Steve. We appreciate you. Uh, I think you joined in about four or five episodes ago. So, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, uh, yes, Bruce, reach out if you need shuttle help at Guide School. That is a fact, Bruce. Thanks, you buddy. will. We appreciate that. Appreciate you. Uh, Jim, you and Debbie, happy 42nd. That's fantastic. So Doug, cool. we didn't get your bad joke tonight, but we will, <laughs> I'm sure we'll catch up when we get back to the brewery. So, yeah, feel free to come up Saturday. Hit up Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, and then let's go for drinks at Trax Pub, and then spend the night in the cling together. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, Barry, you made my trip quicker from Westlock to Sundry. Barry, you got to swing drive. by and grab your kits for you and Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, right, folks. You guys you guys rock. Remember, want more for people than you want from people. Yeah. And love people and catch fish and have yourselves an absolutely fantastic week. And we will... Be back here next Thursday with the Quill Gordon and the Sparkle Pupa. Pupa. Is that correct? Do I remember yeah, that right? Yeah, you got it. Oh, you got who it. are you, <laughs> Tim? Who are you? Who am I? Well, I'm Tim Hepworth, and I can't wait to see you guys next week. And Tim doesn't have a ride tonight, folks, so I had to take on yeah. the uh, take on alcohol the consumption that <laughs> he didn't do. But remember, at 9.30, the video we just showed you about the nymphing rig will be up on the YouTube channel, so feel free to share it with your friends. Uh, if you like stuff like that, if you want more stuff like that made, hit us up. We will get it done for you guys. We try to do our best to appease everybody. Um, but yes, we also have things to do during the week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that helps drive content for us, so we definitely do it. So. Yeah. Let's do it Saturday. I think I might have already shared that comment. But anyways, that's Tim. I'm Dana. We are Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters. We are Thursday Night Live. We are the Fly Fishing Academy. We are Western <laughs> Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. Fly Kia. We are Fly <laughs> Kia Fly Time Tables. What else? What we're not is happy to go. No. But we'll see you guys next Thursday. Next week. Okay. Love you guys. Cheers.